Order the board meeting agenda of the, for the workshop January 29, 2019. I'd uh, like to welcome you all here. Is there anyone here who isn't staff? Wesley. Wesley. Oh, hi. Oh, we're always bad to have you. You can speak if you'd like to. We're, we're open to it. Okay. First item is to review the draft agenda for a regular school board meeting on February 7, 2019. Mr. Davis. Yes, ma'am. Good morning and welcome. Uh, we'll, we'll jump right in it. So we'll have a recognition for Spotlight for School Mentoring Program. We will start off the, our meeting. Then we'll transition from a presentation for CTE presentation. Then it's CTE month as well in the month of February. Are we doing anything for Black History Month? Um, we do have activities. We can uh, identify um, and acknowledge that as well. We can identify. I can do. Uh, I can either do it through the beginning of the presentation or through my update to show what we're doing for from a monthly perspective. I would like us to do something to recognize Black History yes, Month. Yes, ma'am. And um, I don't know if we've already have somebody assigned to the the boards for the room. We probably do. But um, I remember last year. I want to say it was Orange Park Junior High had their students do. Um, Presentation, you know, like artwork and projects that I don't know if we want to get some <coughs> one of the schools and actually, you know, display. Yes, ma'am. But it's, it's, I should probably have brought it up a month ago. We'd be sorry. No worries. Did we, did we do something for Literacy Week last yeah. at the last week? Yeah. Um, I don't know if we did, did something, we do something for Literacy I don't think Week we last did. because it'll be too late. Yeah. We don't be after the past yeah. last week. Yeah. I know we have a lot of publications, a lot of pushes yeah, towards there's schools. There's been a lot of lots of yeah, schools every day. And there's a lot of things for February. Yes, ma'am. Yes. It's fact. not just Black History Month. It's there's, fact. there's a lot. It's yeah. All right. So C one is our minutes from our board workshop for December eighteenth, along with our regular uh, school board meeting on uh, January the eighth. C2 is the student information software system. Uh, I know last month we talked about transitioning to, uh, to EduPoint, which gives us a well, you know, one hub location. And right now we have local assessments, ESE, state reporting, grades, um, ELL, health nursing, all that is in multiple portals. And this allows us to transition to one single sign-on for teachers. Do you have a C2? Mine goes right to C6. Student information <coughs> system. So um, expand underneath or to the left of the folder. Yeah, I did. Oh, my little plus. Sorry. Oh. Did you have Sorry. That's okay. I'll wait until everybody has it. Do you have this? No. That one. You already gave me one. Sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, we're good to go. So this is point. This will be, I know we transitioned, we had focus in 2012, 2013, and this transitions and allows us to have one single platform that is uh, more sophisticated, more appealing to our teachers, to our students, to the organization, along with our parents as well. And this allows us to save time for not having to train on multiple systems related to various platforms. What's the cancellation policy with this? Um, I'll have to look. Do we have a cancellation? With, this, with, with EduPoint? Mm -hmm. Should we get to the place where um, that one would require, written into it was the notice, Mr. Bickner, the That's standard right. kind of notice. 60 day. 60 day notice. And tell me again how many years is this contract? Three is years? It five years. Five five years. Five. This is the one that replaces focus. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah. So it's a, uh, yeah. And it's an average of like $334,000 a year. And I can tell you, for one platform by itself, we, you know, for a performance matters assessment, we spend around 255000 by itself. I know there's a concern about training for our teachers and making sure that, um, I guess, if it's done during the summer, that it's paid training. Um, you know, our teachers have had to learn so many programs. Sure. We went from terms then to focus, and now six years later we're going to this, and then you factor in all the new curriculum. Sure. So, um, Let's just be mindful of not throwing too much at them at once. We will have extensive training for, for, for students, parents, and teachers as well. Thank you. C3 is at E-Rate. This is our, our federal funding, that the, and this is for us to contract with wide area <coughs> network and internet access. Um, right now, this is allowed. We want to go deeper into our expansion of the internet access throughout this county. We know there's pockets of, of difficulty. But this uh, the E-rate will allow us to, to grow legs into neighborhoods that don't have accessibility for our students and our parents. And as right now, E-rate is paying around 80% of, um, of the, uh, the funding for us to do this. And we have, um, it which only costs us 20% to make this happen. 
kind of have a question. Sure. But, uh, does that include like the McRae area and Clay Hill and some of those areas mm -hmm. where they're having it's such difficulty? Okay. No, yes. Because a lot of the parents can't. No, I agree. Tell me they can't get into that. No, yes, ma'am. So this is us doing some really good work with some, dark, dark, I think it's dark fiber work. Mm -hmm. that we, you know, and that's terminology I'm learning as well. We also <laughs> but, get uh, they can really help in the areas that, that it's not provided. Well, is this a okay. partnership with the county or is this just us? Mm -hmm. Right now it's it's us. Right, I think it's a partnership with the county. Right now it's us. Right, it's I just think. us. Yeah, right it's us. But I know there was talk with the BCC about um, some dark fiber opportunities, not just in Clay County, but to bridge from us to St. John's, and right. um, just want to make sure we're all communicating with yeah, each right. other. So yeah, I'll have Bunkley reach out, Mr. Bunkley reach out, and, he, and see. Jeremy's already been okay. speaking okay. with mm -hmm. folks from BTC, so yeah. 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 C4 is our cons personnel consent agenda, uh, nothing major on this. C5 is the appointment of our uh, CCEA and CESPA bargaining team so we can get cool. prepared to look at uh, information, open books for us to move forward. When does bargaining begin? Um, well, once this is approved, we can start that process immediately. Good. Yes, ma'am. Earlier the better. Mm -hmm. So we can focus on, on kids. Mr. Superintendent, you, yes, want, you want me to remind you this point about the program with St. Leo and the MOU, the additional item? Okay. Yes, sir. So we will be, um, I, I can do it afterwards. Okay. Uh, see, see. Are we contracted with Mr. Dietzen or is he, um, is he by the hour? I think he's, he's hourly rate. He's hourly. And so does he come from it for every session? He comes for every bargaining session, but no other meetings, no. Is it necessary for him to come to every session? Uh, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. We've had we've had great results the last okay. couple of years. Okay. What does he charge per hour? Um, I'd have to look. He's, he's actually more reasonable than, like it's than most. Yeah. I think it's two fifty. Uh, I think it's two fifty an hour. Okay. C six is proclamation for CTE month. C7 is out of county travel. You'll see that uh, this is for our RTC band cheerleading FFA course. There are three areas that were in January. This is all because they qualified late for competitions, which is a celebration. And uh, yeah, for sure. some of those yeah, are national. Yeah. They, you know, we, we got kids doing great things. Um, C8 is a contract with the <coughs> Pace Center for Girls and with the Clay County uh, District School System. This is a, currently they, um, it's their responsibility to identify uh, transportation for their students. Right now they, uh, they are in a point where they would like to partner with us in the sense that they, were, they have asked for four routes to take place. So uh, we, uh, we've identified uh, the number of uh, buses and, and, and individuals to, uh, to take on these four routes. They've moved their start time back so that we can accommodate them and uh, they would pay us for the four routes since they're responsible. So I was looking at the last page of the backup, which had the dollar amount on there. Are they, those girls just worked into our existing route and that's why it's, because it doesn't look like very much. No, it's not. Um, it's not. It's not an individual bus just for that one person, or is it? I have to, I, I, I can look. I know that um, Mr. Mr. Sweat worked to build routes for them that's in, embedded, and they were, they're covering all of the, the fuel costs and all the costs for the employees to, to make that happen. Is it a bus or is it part of the white fleet? Ma'am? Is it a bus or is it part of the white fleet? I think it's buses. Is it buses? So that was my, my thought. Is it worked into our existing route, um, taking our students, picking our students up for high school, picking one of their students up? dropping ours at high school and then go into the Pace Center? Or was it an individual bus just running for that one? Because if it's an individual bus running for that one, I don't know if that's really accurate what's there. Because it, it refers to it for the month as two hours. Right. And I'm sure it's more than two hours right. if it's five days a week. Yes, ma'am. Four weeks in the month. And I, I believe it was only a, a, each individual one for the month was only like a, Hundred and something dollars. Hundred six dollars. So I wasn't sure if that was weekly, and it was just printed up wrong. So, and maybe I'm reading it incorrectly. I, I think that's a. I think this is the the rate for two hours is uh, it could potentially be for one day. 
So one day them going to pick them up and transition in both the AM and the PM sessions, but I'll find out. So you'll have it. Many, but these girls go to school every day. Right. They yeah, don't just no, no, just one day. So like that's just the da daily fee. Daily okay. fee. Because in the contract, it words it as monthly. Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll go back and make certain that it, it, I'll get an indication if it's embedded or if it's in isolation, oh. and then what the full cost is per per Thank week you. per month. How Makes many girls are we talking? About? Um, they usually carry. Um, I, I believe it's. I think they're at thirty-five yeah, enrollment. Close to forty that we that they have. Because mm -hmm. they can accommodate up to fifty. Where do you see monthly? It's in the contract. If you read through it, it says that we will bill them monthly. Okay, and but this the, is and then on this is that last each. page it shows the fees. Well, for the hourly rate for two hours. Right. Yeah. I think so that would be that many so, hours. Right. And where are these students picked up from? Where are they picked up? Daily. Yeah, they're from all over the county. No, I mean, do they go to a central location, a school, or? Uh, I'll find out. I mean, they're all over the. I, think, I don't know if there's particular the hubs or, or those yeah, No, to pick them up, to take them Are there. you saying, do we pick them up at their home? Right. Yes. Is it at like their home or is it at a school? Or is it like Bannerman where the kids were picked up from a high school? Yes, is that I'll what find you out mean? from whether it's a hub or whether right, it's Right, that's what I want to know where, it's, yes, where, it's, where those hubs are if that's um, the case. Yes, because my understanding is that Keystone's had a couple trouble getting... Yes, ma'am. And it's uh, and to be openly, that's in not it's not on us. That's on uh, Pace. Pace right. has to provide transportation, just like AMI. Right. right. But if we're going to provide the transportation, we want to make sure that they were picking up all our students that need to come. Yeah, that's that's on them to identify. For okay. AMI, are we providing it? No, no it's man, located that is, at Clay High. It's in their contract. Mm -hmm. It is their their role and responsibility to identify and provide transportation. For AMI? Yes, ma'am, and, and for PACE. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am, I'll look at that. C9 is for a renewal for the Charter School Contract for the Cyber Charter Academy. Uh, this is uh, you know, coming back for this month. Uh, you know, thanks to, to our work with Mr. Bickner, we've identified some areas that we could improve. Um, as, we, as you know, this is uh, we'd have to have three uh, cyber opportunities and just as the third prong. And they will be seeking accreditation, I believe, by June 30th. Is that correct, Mr. Pickner? That's correct. C10 is the, uh, the INVO uh, <coughs> multidisciplinary program to address childhood trauma. This is an impact team. This is categorical funding through Title IV funding. This is really allows us to address students who are dealing with adverse childhood experiences, which is about emotional, physical, sexual abuse, and then being able to uh, witness, observe, um, you know, uh, domestic violence, or they may be going through a, a separation with their parents. And this team really brings uh, an opportunity for us to continue to address mental health through school counselor, through social workers, mental health counselors, um, substance abuse counselors, and a behavior analyst. And uh, what they, what this model allows us to do, additionally, is to is to focus on the north end of the county and the Orange Park feeder. So it will focus on um, Grove Park Elementary, uh, W. Cherry, SVJ, Orange Park Junior High School, and Orange Park High School. And the reason we selected that area, they have a significant amount of Baker Acts within that particular area. And that is an area where they are economically depressed as well. And we believe this team can, can, can go in and provide greater support to students who have greater needs um, in, in this particular um, cohort uh, and feeder pattern of schools. This is a, a total of, uh, it will be no more than $212,000. And I can tell you, um, you know, one of these individuals by itself would, mm -hmm. would cost close to $100,000. Oh, yeah. So how many individuals <clears throat> would be? So I think it's one, two, three, it's four. The schools? No, no, no. Uh, so the suite of individuals, a team. Four. Yeah, it'd, it'd be four. And we'll be able to see their their true impact on kids. So we'll have expected outcomes. And if it works, it's a particular area that we can uh, potentially grow through the county. So it's a team of four people that will rotate between the schools. That they will collectively serve those full schools, and then they'll work with the families <coughs> at home. You know, whatever the need might be. Um, so they're targeting some of the most at-risk students. It's not sort of a all kids sort of referral process. Um, they'll do the assessments, the adverse childhood experiences assessment, and then they'll identify uh, across all of those um, several hundred students that they would target for support. Will they be working with the families to determine resources to help the so, parents as well as uh, the they, students? They will do that, and they'll do that primarily through connecting to our own resources, our own social okay. workers, and, and school staff. 
And what school did you mention? The school schools, four schools. The, the, no, ma'am. It's the Peter yes, Pattern with Grove Park, Park okay. W.E. Cherry, uh, S. Brian Jennings, Orange Park Junior High School, Orange Park High School, and we may put Bannerman as well in there. So the purpose is to identify at risk, and then we're talking home visits. Home visits and, um, and school day visits. And school day visits. Yeah. Okay. Is there training involved for the staff at those schools? The, those particular staff that would come in will also work closely with teachers to provide technical assistance, mm -hmm. the, the development of a behavior plan, mm -hmm. which the certified behavior analyst would complete the evaluation and the registered behavior analyst would help to implement the program. Okay. And I guess the other question I had is because, you know, Keystone several years ago had such an issue with the suicides <coughs> and that type of thing. Um, Wondering if that school we might target too. Yes, ma'am. I would say that uh, that would be a, a next tier. Uh, see, tier two would be Keystone. The first one would be the north side of the county with the Orange Park area, just because the the economic status. And, and the I mean, connecting those resources to the community partnership school that's now down yeah. in Keystone. Right. Um, so we've set a foundation for us to do that. Okay. Now, we don't want to overlap services. Do you think there'll be a modification for our disciplinary procedures at those schools or? No, ma'am, no, I don't no, think so. No. I don't know, yeah. This will run uh, parallel to it. This sounds more like, if you were Baker acting kids, it's more of a personal versus interaction with other students, I would assume. I mean, I mean yeah, yeah, but my like, like initial reaction. Mm -hmm. All right, C11 is proclamation for school counselor week, which is February the 4th to the 8th. C12 is proposed allocation changes. Right now we have. There's any backup no, on that? There's none. <laughs> Why? Seriously? That is a first. It's early. Second. Though. Last month. Uh, it's didn't early. Have any. I don't think we had any last month, did we? I think we did. We always do. <laughs> uh, uh, C, it's early, though. C13 is uh, <laughs> the monthly financial reports from the summer. C14, a deletion of items report. This is uh, LCDs, laptops, camcorders, uh, milk cart crate holder. I might need one of those. Mm -hmm. It's uh, stuff from, I found some stuff from the 80s that we're trying to, to think about. Yeah. What uh, case is in college dorm rooms? I know. <laughs> I guess I yeah. think about that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we have. Two by fours. Mr. Johnson and does a good job trying to get some money out of this. Yeah. <laughs> he really does. He does. He works hard. Uh, C15 is bid renewal processes. Uh, this is uh, the, this is encompass of mo uh, motor oil and trans uh, transmission fluid. Uh, looking at uh, closed circuit uh, TV for surveillance. Mm -hmm. um, looking at plumbing construction as well. So uh, the motor oil and transmission uh, fluid is a one-year contract for around fifty thousand dollars that uh, LV Hires Incorporated won the bid. Uh, looking at the closed circuit television uh, TV surveillance is a three-year contract uh, uh, approval process, and this is a one point five million dollars and then because uh, we need to continue to to update uh, our systems and the third one is a plumbing contract which is a one year is a one year contract with the option to renew this is the first re renewal with um with our work with uh, with countywide work related to um our projects under i think it's under twenty five thousand dollars C16 is pre-qualifications for contractors those who wish to inspire to uh to apply and work with us and their bid C17 is Lakeside Elementary Reroofing Project. This is uh, the low bidder was uh, McCurdy Walden. C18 is uh, Middleburg Elementary Reroofing for buildings four and nine. The contract was awarded through low bid through register roofing. C19 is Ridgeview High School uh, Reroofing for buildings uh, seven and ten. This was awarded with lowest bid was KT, KBT um, Contracting. C20 WE Cherry Reroofing for Buildings 1 and 2. This is McCurdy Walton as well, a little bit. C21 Grove Park Elementary School Reroofing. This is Buildings 8 and Buildings 9. This is also awarded to McCurdy Walton for the lowest bid. C22 is Schematic Plans for Lakeside Junior High School Parking Lot uh, for us to replace all the lighting. This is um, uh, this was uh, you know going to be a facility for around uh, estimated around, uh, less than hundred thousand dollars for a lighting project. C23 is also, uh, you know, parking lot upgrades and replacements for Wilkinson Junior High School. C24 
is uh, the resolution bringing back the Ridgeview Elementary School. There was a typo in the, in the last uh, in the last appraisal process, and that uh, after revisiting, we came back and it's accurate as presented. It was, it was presented as fifty thousand dollars in value of that piece of parcel, and uh, the the last time the appraisal said two hundred thousand dollars. Dr. Kemp's shop and I think Mr. Bickner worked collectively to identify, uh, you know, what the areas of the problem was, and we've come back and it was fifty thousand dollars. Okay, and That's Mr. Fine. Bickner, you have gone over that with a fine tooth comb, and, and we're, we're we're good. Okay. Hey. All right. <clears throat> D one is discussion for approval of the of the new branding logo. This was presented last month. I like the final decision that you made, or that whoever looked at it. Okay. And uh, and D two is human resources special action. That's it. There, there's one other item that we would like to bring, and um, so uh, this <coughs> item is uh, through a partnership with St. Leo University. And what it is is an opportunity for individuals who are working as assistants, classroom assistants. They're able to uh, to attend classes free of charge in order to to uh, take courses to become a certificated teacher. And uh, this is a great opportunity for our employees to continue to have a longer, stronger bench of teachers. And uh, you know, Dave, Mr. Brassi's work rigorously and uh, with um, with St. Leo's in order to create this uh, opportunity. And we'd like to bring it to this board meeting to to um, to bring this MOU. Good for our employees. Anything, Mr. Brassi? No, I mean, uh, we had a nice meeting with Teresa Dixon and, and Betsy, and, and everybody's all excited about the opportunity of creating a pipeline in which our support folks can, can become teachers mm -hmm. and some loyalty for people homegrown to become teachers within our system. So we're, we're really excited about it. Do we have any clue as to how, well, I don't know how you can get this information. Um, how many of our teachers, our teaching assistants, are pursuing their degrees. Do we have any concept of that? Because I've talked to a lot that are in their first stages of getting so, their education. So tier education. one of this program would be people who already have an AA. Right. And so that's that would be the first group mm -hmm, that, we, that mm -hmm. we go through. We're looking at a first cohort of 20, ideally. Awesome. And we'll see how many we can then get from there. And then one of the things that we agree to is to is to place them in a teaching position within our district. Correct. Yeah, and so is the St. Leo campus, at this, I'm speaking out of ignorance at this stage of the game now, St. Leo used to be on the, the St. John's campus. Is it still, didn't they used to be on the St. Yeah, John's yeah. campus? They are they still there? Yeah, they They're still there. there. So this, the, <coughs> the people who are in this program would have to go to campus or online. Oh, I mean, online. yeah, yeah there are a number of courses and online, I realize. Not if but they make the cohort. Make the cohort. They say they have classes in play. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. I'm sorry. Say that again. They would they have meet the cohort. I think they have to have at least ten. Yeah. Right. And they don't have classes in play. They'll find it. Good. Yeah. So yeah. And, and I would say well, this. I mean, they're at St. John's, but but that's if they can do it at other high schools or something, like they've done the administration cohorts, which is. Yeah. And through the chair, Clay County has done a, some uh, awesome job mm -hmm. hiring a classroom assistants to become teachers. Last year. I think we had close to 20 that um, that, that did their paper, that did all their coursework and applied, and were able to hire internally. So, I think it's been a, a you know a, a great vision for the for the work and being able to hire mm -hmm. individuals that know our systems and processes and our, and our kids and our classrooms. And so. do we how many do we have a lot of openings still for teachers? Right now we the game? right now we have 13 openings, and um, uh, that's uh, and they they vary from it's not just one particular uh, content mm -hmm. area. They just vary from early childhood to one science to uh, maybe a CTE. So there are, it's just an array of, of needs right now. So but we we have a uh, fewer vacancies in surrounding counties. Mm -hmm. I know that, that, that that's uh, you know while I don't know you celebrate that, but uh, you know we acknowledge that individuals want to come work in play. So. It's interesting because the, the coming from the um, Florida School Board Association, the needs for teachers traditionally are in the sciences and math, but now they're also finding the future in elementary education and English. Mm -hmm. And when there are needs in those areas, okay. that is huge. That's, okay. that's a concern. Sure. So the programs that we're establishing with UNF, with St. Leo, with these other programs, it's just 
phenomenal. Yes, and we and through the chair, we're in a better position than we've been in reference mm -hmm. to recruiting and tracking. And we have a, a recruiting plan that uh, HR has put together on the process of reviewing it. It's going to be very aggressive over the next couple of months, and we're going to <coughs> see as we go to to interview <coughs> across the the country and across Florida. We're going to open. We're going to extend open contracts to individuals right on the spot. And if they have uh, the will and the, and the skill set and, and they do well in their interview processes and then through their references, we're going to offer them a position on spot. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. well, got a good position. Got it. Well, if we could just offer money, that would be good. I know, right? <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. So do you need approval to add um, what you were just asking? Yes, ma'am. I was just asking. If we, if I can I'm in favor of it. Oh. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Well, Right, and that's it for that portion. Okay, okay. And, and we are running ahead mm -hmm. of schedule, so right. you are on a roll. Yes, um, discuss potential to expand school choice programs for the 2019-2020 school year. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So I'm going to pass this out, uh, <coughs> some fun goodies, and maybe some larger paper than then uh, you may have had it at the house to we'll do so. I always tape the mind together. <laughs> <laughs> it was arts and crafts for me. <laughs> and I thought, what did he use? A negative 12 font? <laughs> Even with glasses, I couldn't read it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so what you have is a bunch of papers and some big paper. I always give a hard time to the staff for the big paper, but we, we definitely need it. So, so the <coughs> Yeah. Oh, sorry. What's next? Oh, school choice. Oh, all right. Well, um, you can still have those. I'm gonna pass everything else out. More papers. Or more papers to bring I was to you. wondering what does that have to do? With oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I was ready for this one. It was in my order. So. This is what I was asking you. Once again, you have uh, some more paper coming to you. <laughs> Let's push. You have that part one. I don't think I have a quick one. Not a quick one. Why did they think this was open in the We already done that. We're doing open enrollment right now. That was a good report, by the way, that you sent that. Yeah, it was very good. And it's still going well. Great to help ever see. <laughs> Does anybody else need a <laughs> copy of this? Which one do you want? Yeah. I have a question about Wayne. Do you have a question about Wayne? Yeah, somebody. The medical. Yeah, whatever. Made this. Here you go. Doc. Yes. Going in tight. Do you want to Let's see if this works. There we go. All right. So school choice. So again, everybody, you have a, a copy of the presentation. Uh, the, I wanted to just, just take this opportunity to talk about school choice in Clay County District Schools. Um, you know, I would tell you this is a you know a national movement that we see that continues to grow legs to give uh, options for parents and, and their students with, within educational settings. And for us in Clay County, now is the time for us to continue to compete you know, with, um, with the educational offerings uh, for our students as, as parents feel more, and they should feel more empowered about trying to find the right pathway for the learners and the right experience for their students as well. So I'd like to just take a minute to, to show this quick little video and uh, about what school choice is. Last week was, uh, you know, National School Choice Week. Uh oh, got to go back. Can we press play on this one? I don't think I can do it from here. Thank you, ma'am. Every year in January, a million of people wear these yellow police scarves and celebrate National School Choice Week. Well, what's it all about? I'm Andrew. And I'm Shelby. And here's what you need to know about National School Choice Week. First, the goal of the week is simple. Shining a spotlight on effective education options for children. And that means all options. Traditional public schools, public charter schools, public magnet schools, private schools, online academies, and homeschooling. For families, National School Choice Week is the time to start looking around for a new or different school if you want to make a change for the next school year. Or if you love your school, use the week as an opportunity to celebrate what makes it great. 
For schools and homeschool groups, School Choice Week is a time to bring positive attention to what makes them unique. And for everyone in our country, School Choice Week is a chance to have a conversation about why every student deserves a great education. And explain that when parents have choices for their children's education, today's students can discover learning environments where they can be inspired, successful, and happy. There's something for everyone during School Choice Week, and that's why there are tens of thousands of activities and events. All of those celebrations are independently planned, and they're all unique. Because every school is unique, and every student is unique too. So regardless of what brings you to School Choice Week, we hope you'll participate, celebrate, learn, and have fun. All right, so school choice, it, uh, it's encompass of all of uh, the, the educational environments uh, that, are, that are offered. I'm trying, sorry. And then, uh, as we know, and I'm trying, I'm trying to go to the next slide. Maybe it'll let me go. There we go. As we know, the school choice is, is becoming a priority with, with a new uh, leadership in, in Tallahassee. We see that this is going to be a, a significant platform to provide uh, more opportunity to our, to our communities. So in Clay County, what you know, for, from our perspective, it is now we have to continue to offer personalized learning pathways to attract uh, you know students who are you know whether they're surrounding counties, whether they're in the county at home schools, and be able to attract them to and retain our students within within our school district. Um, related to choice programs, the you know, the board through the boards uh, cooperate you know through the boards um, collective work, we've identified and launched Montessori last year, and also pre ACE at Lakeside Junior High School. As you know, the Swimming Pin Creek has a waiting list for Montessori. It is, I mean, it's, I think we could do a whole other class. Are we, we going to expand? Yes, ma'am. How long are the wait lists? Do you know? I don't know. It's, it's, yeah, I, 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 think we, I think we could we do a whole other class without a doubt for, for Montessori. And then Lakeside <coughs> Junior High School, where, where we opened up around 75 mm -hmm. seats, we have so many students that are applying to want to go to that. We just don't have enough seats to, to, to grow it. Can we um, break that in another junior high? Yes, ma'am. So as it relates to uh, you know school survey and what we wanted to do is is to reach out to our constituents and uh, you know through the good work and great work of uh, Karen McMillan who's uh, who's really put together this Department of Choice in, in Clay, she she worked with uh, Mrs. Iannone to to create a school choice survey to send out to our community. Uh, we launched that in November and we left it open for uh, for weeks and weeks for parents to to engage and to highlight and select what they may be what they what pathways they would like to see within our schools. And uh, as relates to, to elementary, we see that these are the top five elements. We're STEAM, foreign language, gifted, talented, visual arts in Cambridge, which is accelerated learning. There's a number of opportunities. I can send you the entire report. It's, uh, it's, it's really extensive. But these are the top five areas that were most attractive to the elementary parents and those individuals that currently have students within their school within their school district. Mr. Davis, yes, ma'am. The gifted and talented. What's the difference between that and a Cambridge school? So Cambridge is more about confidence mindset, project-based learning, um, going in, you know inquiry deep to, to to align with ACE. Gifted and talented is really just accelerating the learning processes. I mean, it, it's some of the same, but it's 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 different because. Cambridge has a separate curriculum. Yes, ma'am. And they asked to do. But they're both advanced. Yes, ma'am. Both accelerated opportunities. Um, as relates uh, to junior high school, we see the top five. But once again, was accelerated. And foreign language and dual language continues to be, you know, a, a, a desire within the school district. And uh, you see the STEM, uh, STEAM and visual arts and health sciences in this area as well. And then as we transition to high school, parents are looking at, once again, some of the same main players. With this one, adding uh, technology and, and career and technical uh, pathways, which Clay County has done a fabulous job of that. Um, these are the areas that Clay County has, and in, in, I inherited a, a great system and structure with this, and many thanks to those leaders and teachers that who put this in place. The reason that I highlight criminal justice is because we will seek to become a national model this year. And, uh, and that's a national recognition, and we will transition to multiple um, anchor academies in, in the following year. Mr. Davis, I yeah. have one more yes, ma'am. So I'm looking at the numbers um, for the parents' uh, 
percentage. Yeah, why is it so low on high school? Uh, high school because they there was like so many options so many and put ins that they, they put in, so it's so wide, and these were the top five of it. I think elementary parents are always yeah. engaged. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it was it was so wide. Yeah. I mean, they they, 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 they selected all kinds, so they had one or two percent well, they wanted to put in. These were the top the five. Parents are like uh, whatever yeah. they want yeah. to yeah. have. Yeah. I, I do have. Um, <laughs> Yes, that's right. In the, okay. I, I do have a comment about our Which career one? in tech. Yes, mm -hmm. It always amazes me when people in the community say that we don't have a vocational uh -huh. program. Yes, we I have mean, it look all. at this. Mm -hmm. We are above and beyond, and our kids are profiting from it. It is. is. It's it's amazing for what's going on with the certifications. It's amazing. It, it really is. It's and yet people will say, we don't have we a vocational don't. program. <laughs> they have a lot. Yeah. And, and I think it's us doing a better job educating the community that it's just not an isolated vocational school, what, what we, uh, I grew up into. And it's more spread out through many pockets of every one of our high schools. And there's, it, there's just great learning and in, in, uh, initiatives and pathways at those individual schools that, that make up that one hub. Well, and I think vocational education, you know, traditionally is more about you spend half your day out, that's right. outside the school walls. Yes, and that's really not the case. Yeah, that's right. We can do it. We, we try to get hands on here, but I do believe through our internships and externships, we can we can have uh, we can satisfy that requirement. But I like the model of protecting the school day. I, mean, oh, I, I, I see the value in getting them exposed to the workforce, but you only have twelve years of that's right. Of school. So. That's right. Yes, ma'am. So as we talk about this, you know, every one of our high schools have accelerated opportunities, and that was new for, for this school year, as we have ACE in two schools, IBs in Ridgeview, Capstone at Clay High School, Collegiate High School we just launched at uh, Keystone in Middleburg this past year. How are they doing? Doing great. They have, uh, you know, they have a, a pocket of students that are continuing <coughs> to, to want to engage. Um, we see that the mindset, and, and I say this, Keystone, while we wanted they are the best at dual enrollment. Oh they gosh, are yes. the <laughs> best. And we just wanted to offer another opportunity for kids who may not want to go full dual enrollment, uh, such as I think they have over 30, close to 40 students that do that at Keystone, but to provide opportunities for other students at a ninth and 10th mm -hmm. grade level to start taking dual enrollment courses yeah. through that you know, partnership. But Middlebury is exploding as well. What about Orange Park High? Is there any plan to do anything extra there? Well, right now Orange Park has, I'm uh, sorry, they should be on here as well for a Collegiate High School. They have Collegiate High School as well. And they, I um, didn't see it. Yeah, sorry. One. We, they, they, it always amazes me how many students graduate Keystone High School with their associate's degree. Mm -hmm. yeah. They have it's more. It's more at that one school than, than every other district. school ever. I agree. There's colleges I agree. across the street. They, they, they love it. They work <laughs> really hard. The college mm -hmm. works hard yeah, and very absolutely. closely with them. They have a real. They have really the one of the best cultures related to that. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. And what a money saver for families. Oh man, we are yeah. saving millions of dollars oh by gosh. offering this Those for families. families. Yeah. But Orange Park is in the Collegiate High School. Sorry, you had a question. So it'll okay. be yeah. up there. Yes, but even our other schools, we're doing a great job. I had a parent who just told me their um, child just entered the police academy. Mm -hmm. She graduated high school when she graduated high school before college. She had 50 credits to carry into college. Unreal. Mm -hmm. 50. Okay. We are saving oh it now. Goodness. I mean, the, the, we pick up a lot of the bulk of the funding through <coughs> courses, but it's worth it. The return on investment is so awesome because we're saving this community millions of dollars. That and criminal we're preparing our students for college. That's, that's right. what we're doing. They're prepared yeah. when they go. Well, and they're also participating with the college now. When I went over to St. John's when they had the open house. Yes, ma'am. Talk about phenomenal. They had businesses set up literally saying, come work for mm -hmm. us. And these were kids that were being bussed in. And then they'd leave the, the, the Thrasher Horn and walk over to the actual um, St. John State and, and see the police academy, see the police cars, talk to the people who are in it. Talk, I mean, it was a tour that was phenomenal. And for many, many, many of these students, this was their first college visit. Mm -hmm. And it was like, boy, these guys were being set up for expectations that were awesome. Yes, so when they go on to other colleges, it's going or to visit, it's going to be like, but do you have this? And what about that? They'll know what to ask for. So well, and four-year universities are getting so much more competitive. Oh, mm -hmm. it's it's hard. Hard. Yeah. It is. Yeah. This gives them a leg up. It is. Yes, I, I was talking to Mr. Fasher. He said it, they had. 6,000, no, 60,000 applicants, yes. and they're accepting six. Mm -hmm. Wow. At Florida State. It's that's tip, that's, yeah. That yeah. hasn't changed much over the years. Oh, yeah. Florida and Florida State have right. like oh, yeah. been crazy. crazy. Mm -hmm. that is. Yep, more competitive. So, mm -hmm. we, you know, I agree. We are preparing. Yep.
Uh, one thing you look at when you talk about expanded choice, and this is what this presentation is about, you know, it's, it's, I mean, there's multiple uh, areas that you really have to focus on and making certain that we, whatever we launch and desire, the desire to put in place at schools, it's about making sure that we continue <coughs> to train teachers and they are, they are willing to be a part of that process, making sure that we select a proven curriculum that matches with the, with the choice pathways, and looking at the line materials so they have the resources they, and the business partners they need to be successful. At the same time, looking at any facility upgrades that we need to, to, uh, to, um, to create to ensure that whatever we expand is really truly a reflection of what we're trying to accomplish within the, within the district. As it relates to the acceleration voice in the elementary and junior high, we see that acceleration is, is one of the, um, the, the top flyers, top fives, and that we need to move forward. In relation to this, we see that Cambridge program is currently in Fleming, high, Fleming Island High School along with Oak Leaf High School, currently existing within our current structures. In addition, this year, with the, through the board's approval, we had Lakeside Junior High School, which is going extremely well. And then what right now, what, what I'm actually proposing is that we expand that to Green Cove Junior High School and Oak Leaf Junior High School as well. Mm -hmm. And then alongside of it, identify three elementary so we have true continuity from K-12 as it relates to having pathways for Cambridge. Uh, selection of Charles E. Bennett because openly we have to do something different there so we can create a somewhat of a mindset of how we give kids, kids confidence in the curriculum and train teachers to, to have different ways of thinking. I think we allow it to evolve. It'll be a direct feeder into Green Cove, which is a direct feeder into Fleming Island. Same thing with uh, Fleming Island Elementary School, which is a direct feeder as well. Some students go to uh, can be go to Lakeside, and some students can go to Green Cove uh, Junior High School as well. And that all is in inclusive in the Fleming Island uh, pathway. And then it, we, I think that Oak Leaf needs to have continuity as well through Plantation Oaks and also Oak Leaf Junior High School model that we have Cambridge in the primary and pre-ACE in the junior high school model as well. Um, when looking at this particular rollout, as we look at uh, an elementary perspective, we, we see that year one, this will be not a, we, we just wouldn't throw it all into school at one time, it'd be a phase-in process, and it, you know, where we focus on K2 year one, uh, three, four uh, in 2021, and the third year be five, six, where the whole school is truly, in, it has a in, truly inclusive model. How will that affect the teachers? Um, what kind of training will we provide for them? Yeah, we this training will have to be, uh, we'll have to train the teachers about uh, mindset, about how to leverage uh, online curriculum resources, the same way that we've done with um, the high school and uh, Lakeside Junior High School. So a training will be embedded for teachers um, within the schools. But not all teachers yeah. and not all students yeah. are in the Cambridge right. program. Yeah, so two, it With could be twofold. Program. So it, it could be a part where we phase in the entire grade level, and uh, which is, to me, I, I think that if you can get students thinking and evolving and, and have a systematic approach from, from K to 6, if it's successful, or you can do a school within a school model, mm -hmm. you have particular mm -hmm. teachers. It's just about uh, you know working with the school, working with the leaders, understanding our vision, what we're trying to accomplish. You know, some schools may want to do K two, some schools may want to do subsets and have pathways um, in order to move forward. Will well, there be opportunity for um, like the teachers that are involved in the Cambridge program from Charles E. Bennett, Green Cove Junior, and Fleming Island High School to collaborate together? Yes, ma'am. We'll, we'll we'll do it. Whether we have to do it, uh, we can do face to face. We can do virtual. We can have we can set up Google Classrooms so they can interact, upload lessons, upload best practices. And really, they can focus on uh, you know all this is about deepening a deeper understanding and content for for our for our students. And uh, we're, we're, you know, I talked about it builds reflection, responsibility, it builds confidence, innovation, and engagement from the whole perspective. But I think this is the the, the phase that we would would transition to elementary primary. But so going, I was just going to say going back to those three elementary schools. The families that may not necessarily embrace Cambridge or may sure. not necessarily embrace the pre-ACE idea, sure. but they are neighborhood schools. And I'm thinking particularly Charles sure. Bennett right. to move that directly into just sure. one Full program. Room. In one respect, part of me says, whoa, what an opportunity and to ri raise the school. However, it is a choice. And that's, we always have to remember that sure. it's a parental choice. Sure. So there may, I, there may be some that don't necessarily want that, but yes, some, I, it, that, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting 
I think that's why the school so, model, inside of the school model is really a good starting point. So we can still accommodate the neighborhood And if children. we find, like in the Montessori program, if we find that a lot of those neighborhood children want that program, right. then yes, shoot. Yeah. Full blown in first grade versus yes, kindergarten, you know, whatever. I'm not sure. So, I'm sorry. Go, no, go ahead. Uh, I was just thinking of mm -hmm. the Montessori program. Are we going to need a feeder junior high? From Montessori. from Montessori. I think it's going to be years, uh, probably about three years from, from now. And Montessori stops at um, <coughs> uh, yeah, mm -hmm. eighth grade side. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, as we transition through K-6, it, it may be an opportunity, but that's about three years out, I would say, mm -hmm. to being able to determine if there's an, you know, an actual need. So curriculum-wise for um, the Cambridge program, how often do they change curriculum? Is mm -hmm. it consistent? Yeah, it's so we would use, uh, there's online curriculum resources that are, are provided by Cambridge and teachers have accessibility to that where they can take that and, and we can help them build and infuse into our, our current core curriculum. Mm -hmm. So it wouldn't be standalone in isolation, we use Cambridge curriculum, but we would take their their information they have and we would we would build bridgeways and pathways to connect to what we, what we currently exist. And then, um, you know, uh, build, you know, modified lessons, um, you know, uh, small group project-based learning lessons that they can have and have accessibility resources. So it's not something that is kind of like a packet that you get yeah, from Cambridge. It's no, something no. we're going to have you to You have the option of buying uh, Cambridge uh, isolated curriculum. Mm -hmm. It's truly completely expensive, mm -hmm. and, um, and and some of it, uh, you know, you have to really find out where the instructional gaps are related to Florida standards. So I think the beauty of it is having accessibility to teachers, like we do at Lakeside right now. They have accessibility to all the online curriculum and merging it to what we currently exist. So, is there any additional cost for the online? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, this slide talks about. Uh, can we, can we yes, ma'am. Stop before you go forward. Yes, ma'am. Have we done a survey of our teachers to see the teachers at that school? You know, are they are they on board with going to a Cambridge curriculum? So at the end of the day, we, we have not have a, uh, you know in, we have not surveyed teachers about the mindset we can to see uh, you know where whether they want to transition <coughs> to this. We would say that um, I, I think it just makes sense. I think we all agree from K twelve, and if there's teachers that, that they believe that may not want to do it, and there's teachers that may want to do it, maybe mm -hmm. there's a partner we work with them to find. Uh, you know, the best location where they would like to teach. I'm speaking to a few of the teachers at Lakeside Junior High. Wow. I love it. I know. Wow. I mean, I they very do. happy. I know. I would so. like to see kind of a side by side of if we go all Cambridge, we go all in, what that cost looks like versus yes, doing a hybrid model. And then, because um, to me, part of what I think would be the advantage of the Cambridge curriculum is, you know, it takes some of the workload off of us having to bridge the two. But on top of that, I see it as kind of a immersive experience right. mm -hmm. rather than, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, um, I like the idea of if they're not going to change their curriculum mm -hmm. so frequently, teachers being able to really master right. know, what they're teaching, yes. where mm -hmm. um, yes, unfortunately at the district level, we change curriculum yes, regularly. Mm -hmm. yes, so mm -hmm. This is an advanced teaching style, so if we give them curriculum that's going to be consistent, I think you're going to give them, that's what they need for yes, success. Yes, ma'am. So it might be worth the dollar yes, amount. I mean, I think it's fairly expensive. It? I think it's actually <coughs> included on yeah. the website. So right here, we look at the, uh, from a rollout perspective financially, we look at uh, professional development for teachers. Uh, one, there's a one-time application fee for Cambridge, annual registration, which stays consistent every year to be a Cambridge school. Curriculum materials are embedded per school and hand uh, hands-on materials as well. Uh, you know, for the first year, for all three of our schools, if we elect in the primary, it'd be around $100,000 or $102,000. And this is inclusive of, and we did this at scale for if every teacher wanted to, to teach it in these three schools, so it could be cheaper if we decided to school within a school. And then as you transition to year two and year three, you see that uh, the one-time fees come off and, um, and, it, and it's cheaper, you know, as, as you transition through this, this process and be able to, to embed Cambridge in, in the primary model. As we look at pre-A, so the same way we did uh, Lakeside Junior High School for Green Cove and Oak Lake Junior High School, we see that there's a transition. It'd be a roll-in phase in reference to seventh grade uh, the first year, eighth grade, and then and then it'd be through uh, core content areas of ELA, math, and science. And the last year would be uh, adopting and adding additional uh, subject areas that can be inclusive in this model as well. Um, for the financial rollout here, it's, it's less expensive, uh, you know, when we look at uh, the inclusive. 
So uh, we see there's a progression of uh, startup will be forty four thousand dollars for the two school and then ending up at thirty nine in, in the final year. And this yep. is inclusive of professional development. The well. hands on materials. That's not including the entire. Is that including the entire Cambridge curriculum that we were talking the about? The hands on materials would be more for any type of manipulatives or things like that that the students might need. Right. Whereas on the elementary version, the curriculum materials would be more the purchase of the. Uh, Actual, textbooks right. curriculum if we so chose to go that route. So this is the top dollar amount? This is if we put the junior your eyes yes, and then yes. go back a slide? Yes ma'am. Yes. Or two slides and that's that so the curriculum materials would only be thirteen thousand per that's school. And that's more form. of an I don't think that's overly priced. That's more of an optional cost should we choose to go that route. Mm -hmm. Otherwise the online so curriculum for the yeah. teachers to access is inclusive of the annual registration that that you do each time. So, so, it's, it's, so and that's a consumable, in my understanding. So they'll have it every year. So the that's curriculum materials each year. Well, so that would be the consumable books, probably for the students. Yes. Sir. Then. Yes. And then that would, that we, would if we went with, okay, let me just wrap my brain around it. If we did not do that, then a teacher would be teaching. They would have the 509 per teacher plus the 2800 application and their annual registration. No, you're that you're then includes mm -hmm. anything online. Correct, for and the so teacher access. For the yes. teacher access. So let's say I'm teaching a Cambridge classroom in whatever, math. I don't know, if do they sep separate it out? Is math, language, arts, etc. elementary. So as an elementary teacher, I would be self-contained for my Cambridge group. That's my understanding. Okay, so let's say I have 20 some students, I'm self-contained, I'm teaching Cambridge. Then for each of those areas, I could either have the curriculum materials or I would be making copies. Yes, but I would also add to that that the Cambridge model is more of a type of pedagogy. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure that it would necessarily always mean that you need to print a physical piece of paper for a student, right. but the materials would be supplemental, like textbook type of materials that could be there, but the company has said that you can do the whole Cambridge program without having those. Okay. So we have not re, you know, had the opportunity to phys physically, uh, visually review those yet, so okay. that's why that's we're kind of at that point right now of that's an awesome optional. Mm. At those three elementary schools, would we eliminate the gifted program? <coughs> uh, no ma'am. We would continue with We would continue our work. Could you save some money <coughs> if you eliminated gifted and moved your gifted and talented to your Cambridge program? Yeah. Well, I think our services will have to, it, it, you know, mm -hmm. when we talk about gifted, it'll be about our services remain the same. So there's nothing that when we talk about uh, teachers, uh, maybe some have assistance. Mm -hmm. Gifted programming, when parents opt into it and their kids are eligible, <coughs> that becomes driven by a lot of federal guidelines mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and requirements mm -hmm. for those services. Uh, if a family chooses not to participate in the gifted programming, whatever that may look like. So you might see less demand for gifted you could. if you're offering right. you could. coverage. So through it might parent, just naturally happen. Through parent election and through the um, you know, services. So that would be the pre A. So this is the funding as relates to. Um, so that's looking at uh, Cambridge for uh, Cambridge in the elementary model, and then pre A. in the junior high school, and that'd be inclusive of five more schools. As relates to, to STEAM, STEAM is uh, you know continue to be one of the top five in every one of those categories, and STEAM is related to engineering, arts, and math, technology, and science, an all inclusive model, a way of thinking. So what we would, uh, you know, we'd like to do is, is to identify Lake Asbury Junior High School uh, as a school that's a future built upon full steam ahead. And we say that because they have eight feeder schools that, that, that in, could impact and being able to, um, to, to transition to, uh, to, the, to this uh, junior high school. Doesn't Dr. Okay. Zimlick go to Lakeside? That's um, my house, that's over by me. That's so like, that's yeah. I think for, there's so a part, like yeah, right? so a part of them, it's, it's weird, a part of each of these schools are all mm -hmm. transitioned to make up, this, yeah. this school is huge. It's I like, have another question. Yes, ma'am. Going back to the ACE program, if you have kids that finish the ACE program in case, or not ACE, but the Cambridge program in K-6, okay. are they guaranteed a seat in junior high? Uh, we can look at that model. We can have, I mean, we, we would want to make certain there's continuity right. and then we create it. So right. we so can we, we'll look at continuity. We need to match what you have available. See, all the way yeah, That's a good question. 
my my initial reaction would be those that have successfully completed the Cambridge mm -hmm. program right. would be. Right. But those that may not have embraced sure. the Cambridge program may not necessarily benefit from the pre age program. Right. Just from a but I just don't want to get to a point where you finish sixth grade and yeah, you they don't have the opportunity to work. Right. 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 Yep, and we'll, we'll have, if we have to continue to grow and the number of students and grow and to train teachers, we'll continue that model to make sure they're afforded that opportunity. So as we talk about STEAM and uh, we look at allowing our students to compete globally in this ever-changing world, we see that, that uh, STEAM is, uh, in, you know, Lake Asbury connects to so many elementaries within, within our school district. So as we talk about Lake Asbury and potential of a three-year rollout, we would like to do, you know, grade sevens to have a cohort of, of students in STEAM and ELA, math, social studies, science, technology, and arts, and then allow that to evolve in seventh grade, transition the fall year to eighth grade, and then the third year expand to a whole school and seek advanced STEAM accreditation. Lake, in, in the reason for Lake Asbury, they have a, they have tremendous arts, first and foremost. The performance of visual arts is, is like no other. And then they have an awesome robotics, uh, robotics class and robotics clubs, and they do a good, good job with um, you know, implementing technology throughout this entire school. This school, if you haven't had a chance to walk it, walk it, it just reaps and feels like an A school from yeah. walking on the campus, not even in the door. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they have a right mindset of uh, exactly how to accelerate student achievement. And good leadership as well, good teachers. So the three-year rollout here would be, uh, you know, the top year would be $114,000. This is about providing professional development to our teachers for the mindset of STEAM, what that is, how do you embed it for project-based learning and inquiry-based learning, I should say. And this is about expanding one-to-one -one devices for Chromebooks, looking at flexible furniture within the classroom to, uh, to be able to create spaces for uh, the inquiry-based learning. And then also looking at any learning materials they may need through science and it's through, uh, you know, science for line investigations, through more robotics, um, in any technology or reinforced curriculums. And then we transition every year. You see that um, we would uh, we need less money related to furniture and materials and uh, potential technology and uh, to be able to implement. But I think this has an opportunity to become a flagship school and to be, to be recognized throughout the state. And the last thing we have in, is our presentation of the day. We see visual performing arts was in all three of the categories in the top fives. And uh, in last night, I'm going to say this was the best Oh, concert yes. that I've attended since being a superintendent. Mm -hmm. It was really, really good. I mean, they, they upped their game with identifying kids who qualify for all county, and it was a beautiful night led by great teachers, and, and I'm glad the kids were involved in it. But as it relates here, you know, and I know that we went out months ago and we talked to, uh, to a school, and uh, staff talked to the school and said, you know, what a beautiful place this would be if, if we could do this. And knowing that this truly had to come to the board, <laughs> and uh, we, we appreciate it. It was only a conversation <laughs> that the uh, staff. So, so, uh, <laughs> so I just want to throw it out there right now so I don't know how to talk about it. <laughs> but, uh, but staff did under my direction, so that we're good. <laughs> uh, so, you know, and you may ask, you know, why, why Coppergate? You know, Coppergate is really truly an essential location to major intersections. It is a utilization rate is at 74%, which has an opportunity to, to have classrooms and opportunities for students. It's a, a great feeder pattern to Lake Asbury Junior High School, which is, if they become a potential STEAM school with arts being involved, it could potentially roll up for now. Um, and it has a room for facility growth, and it's a newer facility, it's an attractive facility. And I think that um, eventually it, it, it has an opportunity to, you could expand wings. The Copper Gate, I believe you can add uh, you know, uh, we, could, we could increase permanent space. Yeah, program yeah. space, and it could potentially become a K-8 model if you, if you aspire to do it. Um, it becomes. Now, looking at it, this is a three-year rollout for that to, to become reality. Now, this is just a bear to get it started. It, you know, there is a. Um, I, I will pass out a uh, you know wish list that I have I've shared with uh, our local um, legislators about how much money this would cost us to, to make it happen. $3 million to do a full-blown, and it's identical to what, uh, you know, like a, a La Villa School of the Arts may be. And this is a, uh, a, now, a financial analysis of what that each of those would be able to cost. Mm -hmm. However, to get it off the ground, I believe that if we added two instructional, two instructional resource teachers, now I say this, Coppergate teaching staff stays the same. And what we do is just build around the mindset of visual performing arts. We would add two additional resource teachers, whether that be visual arts or performing arts. 
on top of what they already currently have, then we would increase the, uh, their performing arts materials and equipment so they can compete. So if it's keyboarding or if it's, uh, if it's choral, if it's uh, you know, visual arts through uh, 2D, 3D art and they need a, uh, you know, uh, materials. And then we would like to do before and after school opportunities in the sense that we would pay our teachers who are qualified to, um, to offer before and after school um, opportunities to expand, whether it be real deep dance or ensembles or chorus. And they would have to, they would have to be able to um, audition in order to uh, select those seats to be able to really truly build a program. And then in year two, you would, you would continue to expand the before and after school opportunities. You continue every year to add another resource teacher and more materials and then you would get to a point in year two and year three hopefully we're savvy enough with our budget and i can beg uh, the board and dr kemp to find some money to start really seeing some facility changes where we have uh maybe an, an area where they where they have a, a you know amphitheater i say that i mean or dance rooms uh, or acoustics in certain particular rooms where that eventually evolves and uh, in, and allows our students to perform will we see any changes in curriculum I would love to see this, I mean, the performing arts side of it is beautiful, but it bridges so well to history and mm -hmm. um, science and all of those things. <coughs> and if you can build curriculum that's Four more of a full-on liberal arts education, I think that could be a really... Yeah, I think that uh, once you get all the, t you know, get players at the same table, they have really great teachers in the school district, especially at Coppergate, they come to the table and talk about how that can be an inclusive model. And uh, and then really, I mean, we have some really good music, choral teachers, choral directors, and band and arts, and get at the same table as well and let them hash it out. I think they could truly evolve to something really nice. I, I think, uh, I'm just going to tell you though, going to this this right here, this community will push us to make sure we get it right, and it will be super attractive. Mm -hmm. So if we are talking to Senator Bradley and, mm -hmm. and uh, Representative Cummings, we might m throw out, mm -hmm. you know, if we had $3 million, we could really do this right. Yes, ma'am, mm -hmm. to the chair. I That was in the State Schools video in that meeting. That was all about potential of, of bringing $3 million to create this environment. And, I, and we I can name it the Bradley Cummings Hall, right? Yeah. Hall. <laughs> 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 no, no, we can't do that. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I gave them this. People who were alive. <laughs> I gave them this $3 million analysis, and, uh, I, you know, I can, I can only hope. I talked to him. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. I forget where we were. We were at, at the um, going away for Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Oh, the going away for Stephanie mm -hmm. Kapalousas. I just <laughs> kind of eased his, my you way were over there. there. <laughs> you were in his just head. happened to have <laughs> something on my mind. We need to do <laughs> this. You know, if we really want. Well, and Clay Day is coming up. Uh -huh. And. Well, shoot, there's a thing for Sam here in this afternoon as well, isn't there? Yeah. And, and, so, and, uh, and through the chair, um, you know, Miss Bay's. Love a school and that um, that had visual performing arts, and we also have Stephanie Jackson as well, who's at uh, Grove Park, who did right. the same thing. She, mm -hmm. she her former school and former life that she had a performer visual performing arts school. So you have a lot of individuals that understand how to launch and kick this off, and uh, can help um, you know Miss Dial, whoever we believe to be you know to, to to lead this work in the schools. Anything we're good. It's an awesome opportunity just to piggyback off of what you said to raise the academics. So it becomes so enthralled and so engaged, and so do the teachers, that it really spurs on all growth. Were you at La Villa? Where no, I was at Lake Forest Elementary. Lake Forest Elementary. Lake Forest did you, and I'm throwing this out as another, did you offer any foreign language at Lake Forest? No, not that. That was on the horizon. But we started off without anything and then had a $2.4 million grant, very close to the $3 million. Built a black box theater, strings room, offered three different kinds of dance, orchestra, band, strings. Yeah. Now you offered strings, but where did the students go following there? La Villa and, and then eventually Douglas Anderson? Yes. And how many of the high schools in Duval offer orchestras? <laughs> But that I don't know. Uh, most do have orchestras, but I don't know how many have. Yeah. No, I mean, we have bands. We don't right. have orchestras yeah, at this right. stage. Yeah, so through the, so chair, through the chair, everyone has, yeah. everyone has a, a real dynamic, in my former life, a choral program. A mm -hmm. really rich ensemble. Mm -hmm. So Well, yeah. in, in Clay, we have a very dynamic choral uh, program as well as an right. ensemble program. I think but not that the was orchestra the only side. Orchestra so side just is being the only aware one. of what our yeah. strengths are right. at the high schools and building up to those right. would 
Only, I think only one had an orchestra that was be in uh, the junior. Yeah. 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 What, <coughs> what set me on fire is my granddaughter she went to La Villa and then Douglas mm -hmm. Anderson, and she did get accepted to the University of Florida. Yeah, awesome. And and going to the Separation. productions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, I just drooled. I just thought if we could just start. Mm -hmm. Get our foot in the door to start something like this. It's it's magnificent. Yes, ma'am. If we can just get started. Mm -hmm. So is there grant money for us? We anywhere? can go after grant money. We can try. Well, it's worth a try. Yes, ma'am. We can definitely. So if you look at overall lot, I'm sorry. Did you have a question? I was just gonna. The grant money that you guys went after in Duval was it based on demographics? Or it was Magnet Schools of America. So okay. yes, it was on demographics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that might restrict us. A it little could bit. restrict us. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the, the over launch for 1920, and, and the reason I bring this to the, the board is for your direction, in, in, in as we start the budgeting process, we would have to take this off the top to launch it for 1920. It would cost us around $460,000 to make this happen. But that's doing the performing arts at... Yes, ma'am. That, that's doing the performing arts, and that's all of the, the STEAM and all of the, uh, the, the Cambridge, all of it inclusive. So for one year, Four hundred sixty, uh, you know, a thousand dollars, and this is around one point uh, two million dollars, and I think it came up to around what sixty kids. So for sixty kids FTE for three years, we could build this uh, opportunity for kids. But if we get money from the legislature, oh, it, you would build something special. Mm -hmm. You would build something mm -hmm. special. Okay, ladies, we have our work cut out. Mm -hmm. And this is the year to do it. This yeah. is now. This, this is, is the year. This is well, you've is got the year. your the share from this the city and the house. house. So if, you're not, if you're ever going to... I mean, we did get the treasure horn a few years ago. Uh, but, yeah. Yes, ma'am. So, we've got to... Might need to change that school board policy. <laughs> what, they... They have to pass away before the next year. Yes. Uh -huh. The only exception was Jesse Town. I'm sure that Senator Bradley and Representative Cummings wouldn't mind not having their name yes. on this. Mm -hmm. And I'm they will do it for the good joke. of the district. It's a joke. <laughs> so, you, you're, hey, you're five minutes ahead of schedule. Yes, um, so, so, are you right, wanting then? us to what, uh, yes, put what's this on the agenda to move forward at this point? <clears throat> I would like I would like to take all of it to to the board for approval um, in, in in discussion if need be. So uh, you know I would uh, I just look for direction you know in reference to it. if you believe this is appealing this is I think now is the time I agree now is the time. Absolutely, yeah. I think so too. And, and so one more thing I think we need to look at is is a K eight on Fleming Island. I agree. I with think you. we desperately need um, our <clears throat> elementary schools are all other than Fleming Island Elementary, but from what I've understood, Patterson is busting at the scene. Mm -hmm. They are. Mm -hmm. So we good. desperately, mm -hmm. we have the room, the room. Um, so we need, we have that property, mm -hmm. so we need to look at a K-8 and that would help with the junior high kids' parents, you know, are sending them. Yes, ma'am. So that, that to me needs to be a priority also. Yes, ma'am. I, I don't disagree with that. Well, with the new growth but if that we're, Ms. Gilhausen mm -hmm. was talking about, yeah. that would eliminate hurting Greenville right. Junior if mm -hmm. we did do it. Right. Okay. Well, the, that would be, I would tell you this, is, um, you know, as in the next 10 years, we're, I mean, we're not a, a little, we're not a small school district. And we, we're a medium-sized school mm -hmm. district. You will see 50 schools in the next 10 years. We will be up to 50 in the next 10 to 12 years. And uh, if, if, mm -hmm. if, you know, I do believe if you built the K-8, you would be able to fill the K-8. And let's just say that we had available seats at Green Cove Junior High School. We can look at a different, you know, cohort uh, choice school for Green Cove that's truly Cambridge or we can, people can can bus their own their own children or if you have grant money you can bus children to it. And the it, way so. Lake Asbury is going to be growing. Yes. That that's, schools, yeah. Those schools are going to be overcrowded. And it, and and it may room. require that word we don't like. Don't even say it. What is it? I'm not going to say <laughs> it. Don't even say it. Oh. It's called Reduced District. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. 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 We, I won't even breathe. I <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do you want to, you, you're going to put this on the next? With, with, with approval, if there's mm -hmm. appetite. Are y'all ready? Like there's appetite. Let's, Let's go ahead. Yes. I do have a question. Yes, um, ma'am. You know, we've talked about a lot of these things. I, I just, you know, we have talent throughout the county, and but we have to provide the opportunity. And I want to make sure that we're also thinking about transportation for some of these students. Because, I, I mean, you know, just like the other night, um, we went to the uh, performing arts. There were three schools not represented there. Yeah. 
Wilkinson Junior High, Keystone Junior High, and Keystone Heights High School. And of course, the reason probably of that is, I would is say transportation. Yeah, yeah, transportation probably is a big yeah. issue there. So I, you know, I, I think it's a wonderful yeah. thing, but I want to make sure that um, students that live in the in fall, like Clay Hill, some of those areas that are out, uh, have that opportunity as well. Are you talking about last night? Yeah. Because it was interesting, I only counted four students from Fleming Island High School in that program. Mm -hmm. But there was not yeah. the music so teachers. I would the say, music teachers weren't even listed. So I say from, I mean, yeah. from Houston and High School. I, so I say I through, the, I say through the chair. That's correct. I, the I will address that uh, through the chair. I would say this is that um, the all county is, is audition, and, and I agree. Mm -hmm. I think the big and it's about it, it's not about geographics, about where you live. It's about the the best product being representative of Clay County. I'm However, sure. I do agree with Ms. Bullock in the sense that probably individuals did not go and audition potentially because of the uh, the drop Well, I and you're agree. talking three well, days Well, the other thing travel, is, too, as I mentioned, one night. they have one music teacher, does four periods of, of um, junior uh, high school. No, does four periods of band for high school, right. and, and then does one, one period, yes, one for junior yeah. high. As Whereas in the junior high, they have a band teacher mm -hmm. who does it. Exactly, so you're they right. Really so they need a second person. They need a second person, that's at right. You, at Keystone High School. That so that, that's something we should look at. That's mm -hmm. right. That's yeah. on the, through the chair, that's on the radar that me and Ms. Bullock talked about, and uh, mm -hmm. I don't disagree. Okay. No, I don't disagree. Okay, uh, Mr. Right. Davis, you are now two minutes ahead of schedule. All right, all right. We'll right. so discuss so outlook for school safety. So are we adding that to the agenda? We are adding that to the agenda. Oh, sorry. Choose play. And I want to say thank you for allowing us to to, uh, to have an individual that leads and coordinates school choice. I think that, that uh, Ms. McMillan's done a good job, and Ms. Jamie, I know that's a good job as well. Okay, okay. the yeah. next item, discuss outlook for school safety and security for the 2019-2020 school year. You got your big paper already? We've got our big paper. <laughs> That's a big paper. So, um, so through the uh, you know through the chair, the, the board asked me uh, you know directed me last meeting to to build options related to um, you know the school safety and where would we be in relation as it relates to you know where we have a continued model that we have uh, in related to putting uh, officers or guardians within our schools. And look at every potential option that that we may be able to put in place to to give you a uh, you know uh, an opportunity to select what you believe could be best uh, for this organization. With this said, please note in these five uh, uh, proposals, none of them it's not any particular order and rank order from us what we believe the best to the uh, to the worst. What it is, if you look at the big sheet, it's an order from year two reoccurring costs. What from the least uh, the least amount of dollar that costs us to the most expensive amount of dollar, which is reoccurring for year two and going on. Um, the first model that we brought to the table was all inclusive about what we currently have, and that is our partnerships with. Clay County Sheriff's Office, Town of Orange Park, and the Green Cove Police Department, which I think all three do a wonderful job. And they also have an inclusive of Model 1 is our school school safety officers model. It, it was embedded with our guardian programs. If you look at A, that's an isolation with, it, with, our, with our current model where we do not have a resource officer in every one of our schools. If you remember the conversation through the governor's expectations to make sure that we either have a resource officer or a guardian at every one of our schools, I believe we were unanimous, and I, so I'm, I know Ms. Bullock wasn't on the board at that time, but I'm sure no. she agrees, yeah. that uh, you know having a police officer at every one of our schools is the best model to do. Um, I will say that we have, we were the first district in Northeast Florida and one of the first districts in the state of Florida to have a guardian program and do it well and do it effective. Mm -hmm. But if you look at options B and options E, with our first mentality and our first goal was to put an officer at every one of our schools, option B and option E, through e allows us to do that, and option A does not. So I just want to put that in, in front of everybody so you so you understand. Um, every one of these options, however, um, does embed uh, two things. It embeds us uh, hiring a chief of police uh, within our school district, mm -hmm. and then seeking to work with the Florida Department of Law Enforcement to go ahead and start to apply for uh, law enforcement just in case this school district ever needed to do so. Um, that is your will and your if you decide you want to put that in place or not, but it gives us an opportunity for someone in in house to lead that work, regardless if we keep our current structure where we have beautiful partnerships with all police departments, but it allows us to start the process if we ever need to do it. 
In addition, every one of these office, uh, every one of these options keeps the uh, school safety officer in place. Um, and you may say, hey, that's duplicating. You may may not need all of it. it and, and I can explain that in a little bit as um, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Harvin explains every one of these options for the board. You also have an individual sheet that identifies each option and the funding sources behind it. We spent weeks on going very granular so that we have a true reflection of the actual cost from badges to, you know, to, uh, to holsters to everything you could think about we put in place. And good work by Dr. Kemp, great work by Mr. Harvin, Harvin to, 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 for us to really come collectively to put these options to your place so that you can provide any direction as superintendent for what you aspire uh, for us to do. And I'm going to release this to Mr. Harvin this time. Before you go on, yes, I know um, I had spoken to you and it was last minute, so I don't know if you have it, but do we have an estimate of what option A, if we transition to all resource officers through the sheriff, what that would be costing us? I think that's it. So, um, through the sheriff's office in isolation, the, the last time we had conversation was 5.6 to 5.8 million dollars. And that would be that would every be, year, that would reoccurring be, every That would year. be next year, and, uh, and I would say it would have an uptick every year because they, they get raises every year. Sour raises. And, and they do a great job. I'm just saying, their response right. time, they do work, but it would be, I would say it would start out at 5.6, and then you would see probably a $200,000 minimum increase due to benefits, due to raises every year that, um, Cars. Um, yeah, I mean, that you would see, and that's so that's for it, inclusive is, for anybody. I would is believe. that what option E is? An SRO at every off at every yeah. school, in addition to an SSO. Mr. Harvey. Yeah, option E basically turns over the 24 elementaries that are currently covered by our SSOs. Turns that over to the sheriff's office, so we would have an SRO. In addition to the SSO. In, in addition, the SSO would then become uh, kind of like a teacher's assistant. It would become an, an aide to that SRO. They could be used as relief. It could be a second, I don't know, nobody likes hearing guns, but second or third gun in a school. Uh, they, they, would, they would be more oriented towards safety versus security. And, <coughs> and the total cost for the SSOs, um, I believe, is just shy of $900,000? Yes, it's it's $861,084. $861,000, $861, and right now it's being currently paid out of safe school funding. Um, mm -hmm. I would say that um, uh, we have to understand that we are not guaranteed to have the Guardian SSO program every single year. It has to be approved by the sheriff's office. Certified. So it has to be certified. So, and, and I'm not saying the sheriff would, 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 would stop us from moving forward in this model because it works, but let's just say you, a new sheriff comes in and there could be potential problems with that. So, and then we have 29 current employees and, um, you know, if, you know, some of those individuals can transition to become resource officers if we were, a they were able to need, whether it be in, in any entity or through our own. And then, and then it would be a part where we would uh, have attrition and, and if we elected to do a different option that we would eventually wean away uh, through particular, having all these spots internally. If I can interrupt real quick, the, the mm -hmm. sheriff, he, he's not obligated Mm -hmm. to certify our guardians. Right. Uh, there's a lot of sheriffs throughout the state that they want no part of the guardian program. They will not do mm -hmm. it. Um, I, I, there are only our, 25 counties in yeah. the state that certify their gar yeah. guardians. That's right. 25 yeah. out of 67. So and and he, through the chair, most, some of them, most of them though have their own, you know, the, some of them are creating their own police departments. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was one just recently what? in um, November that did. Yes, One of the absolutely. concerns, though, is that the sheriff's office is having difficulty hiring um, officers. There are just, people out there who are running to yeah, become police yeah. officers. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the notes I had written down is nationwide, we're experiencing a fifty percent reduction in law enforcement mm -hmm. applications. It's so you're running shows, the same routine you know, as teacher teachers. critical shortages, mm -hmm. law yeah, enforcement as well. Uh, one real quick thing before we go on is we're not we can't discuss unless we go dark. We can't discuss how many officers we're going to put in a school. Thank you. We can't discuss uh, emergency preparation plans, et cetera. So me and Mr. Baker talked about it real quick. So either so, we don't go into that or um, we if, need to If, if I may make a, a question then, if we have, as board <coughs> members, have questions about what the intent is for next year in that <coughs> vein, numbers of officers, things of that nature, wait until after the meeting's over to ask or we go dark mm -hmm. is what your I, response is i think we can talk about number of officers but now if we if we're going to say how many are we're, we're going to have two oh no 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 no, 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 no. think of it like planning an army 
Right. You know, and we're planning this meeting, as I understand it, is are we going to raise an army, are we going to have conscription, or are we going to have, you know, people that we hire from other countries to come in and fight it? Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. If you say, this is what we're going to station them at, these are the things we've learned from our seas, spies, no. that's what you can No, we have to no. close this meeting no. and go no. into no. right. the shade. But, but yeah. there are some concerns, I guess, is what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> I gave him that. All right, Mr. Harvey. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I got you. His analogies have been really good. <laughs> I gave him he gave me a cell phone analogy. It was great. I missed it. Just, just one more thing, he if I may. He, I was supposed to talk about it. He did a game and good one. I prepared the three statutes that govern this mm -hmm. from, from open meeting to right down the line. And you'll see the last section is all of the things that make it a closed meeting. Okay. And that's Thank what, you. those are the issues that when you get into threat assessments, when you get into threat response plans, mm -hmm. evacuation plans, all of those things, it has to be closed. Well, it's a lies to be closed. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that says you have to close it. What it says is mm -hmm. that you can no longer force it to be an open meeting, and that's the whole point. Thank you, sir. Mr. Harbor? Um, and as Mr. Davis indicated, each in your big spreadsheet, uh, Dr. Kemp had wanted to try to get everything on, on one page. He really does this a lot. This information really is All right, it's a big paper for me. Thank you very much. It covered everything. I don't have big paper, man. I like this stuff. It is. I know. Take the time. And I realize the text can get quite small, so that's why with each option, Again, not ranked in any particular order other than the reoccurring second year cost. Um, with each option was an individual sheet uh, really detailing what that option is about. And hopefully, uh, those questions were answered within the individual sheets as they correspond with the option. Uh, uh, really, uh, Mr. Davis has kind of already gone over briefly the options. Um, option A is our current model. Let me back up. As Mr. Davis indicated, all options include us filing the necessary paperwork with the Department of Law Enforcement, creating our own law enforcement agency. Once we get that, we're two or three months ahead of the game. We don't have to do anything with it. Or, no matter. Or um, we have that and then we act on it. Now, we act on it by hiring, uh, allotting a police chief uh, and, and, and very minimal uh, staff to go along with that. Or we go right on down the line with different options, and we expand that to to create um, additional SROs in schools, all the way from 24 up to um, the whole the whole district. Um, that's a lot to chew on there, but there are some districts throughout the state who said, "Hey, we want to get ahead of the game. We don't want to be caught off guard." Mm -hmm. So they went ahead and filed the paperwork, created their own law enforcement agency. That way, if the board at any time could pull the trigger, mm -hmm. okay, we're ready to start it. So, to speak. so, so yes. yes. <laughs> that was all. Yeah, I, like, I, I got that one. Bruce we are not <laughs> pulling any triggers. <laughs> we are not pulling any triggers. So they can we're not talking <laughs> guns and pulling no, triggers. Yeah, I'll leave it back. <laughs> Sorry. You get, so, so, so you get over stamp there. approval or something. Yeah. And I see fuel calls. Are we, okay, so uh, so we're gonna have a car for yes. Um, you know, I kind of wrote down about twenty six items last yeah. night on I put it on that. Do you have a visual? Yeah, this, I know that on justifications one. really. And number one as once I was looking at them. Number one, I wrote down the visible deterrent. I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Okay. The visible deterrent, in addition to that, is worth spending the dollars alone on marked vehicles. You compare that to an SRO in a uniform, mm -hmm. or do you want in plain clothes? Mm -hmm. You know, having that visible presence. If you'll notice now in our school zones, we have blue lights every morning. Uh, I should, let me back that up. At the secondary schools, we have blue lights every morning with that marked police car. That, that's a deterrent. So, um, after what happened last year, um, Marjorie Stoneman, the first thing all law enforcement did was take those patrol cars and put them on campus. Some of them had an officer in it, some of them didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, that, that presence, you know, what, what do we do when we, 
when we all we all obey the speed limit and understand that. But what if we accidentally go over the speed limit and we see a patrol car? What do we automatically do? Everybody looks down at the speed limit. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So uh, to me, that was number one as a visible deterrent. And then uh, Mr. Davis has listed quite a few. Yeah, number. so these are other listed, and good job on Mr. Harmon as well, Mr. Kemp, Dr. Kemp. Uh, these are, you know, uh, I believe a necessity to be a part of the equipment with transporting students if need be. I know their sergeants can do it, but you got 644 square miles in Clay County, and our schools are spread all over conduct threat assessments, um, you know, they're not just equipped with handguns, they have rifles that will be equipped within their vehicles. Uh, we have individuals that go out to our out-of-town athletic events, they attend court, they respond to alarms, they have 24-7 uh, coverage of schools, especially in the area you know, when we have like, uh, you know, when we don't have students on campuses. Um, if we had, they, in order to, for them to enter a crime scene or wherever for the natural, uh, you, know, nature, you know, a disaster, they have to be able, and nature should be natural. So if we, I don't know what a nature disaster is, but it's, it, we have one of those. We have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> we have one of those. <laughs> they may have isn't to be the idea to keep our S SROs on. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's exactly right. I don't want to yeah. transport them. Yeah, yeah, but they. That's where the I, lieutenant I agree. or the sergeant comes because then, then that could be something prearranged by somebody that then would cause them to be off campus. Uh, yeah, so um, their job is to be unpredictable, and but there's mm -hmm. going to be times to be openly that they may have to transition and this uh, is a to a neighborhood. This will be a 24-7, if we go this route, this will be a 24-7 department. And, and typically uh, elementary schools don't have athletic events after school, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm just looking at some of the things that probably, you know, aren't happening on a regular basis. For well, there would be a great cost savings if we didn't do a vehicle at elementary, and maybe we could phase it in as the dollars, as, as we become a richer district. But um, Again, respond, you know. responding to bus instances off campus, that pulls them away from the campus. So, and, you know, but you may have to do that. If you're, I mean, they, they, yeah, may, right. have, they may have to do it. And, um, if someone can get to a bus accident fastest, and school, I mean, with a bus accident, you're talking before school has started. Yeah, and, and right I, after school has ended, and, and if that's the case, then I so would this, say first available. But is, the other side of that is, I will say, after Marjorie Stone and Douglas last year, driving to Argyle Elementary and seeing a police vehicle sitting in front of that school, mm -hmm. I do feel whoa, mm -hmm. made me first of all incredibly sad, but mm -hmm. secondly, I thought, good, get them out there and make certain that people know that we are all in this together. Yes. And through the chair, I would say, I'm sorry, go ahead, Ms. Sorry. Just when you say it's going to be a 24-7 system, are we talking about if we stand up our own police force? This is not if we are hiring SROs, correct? Or if that, that's one of the same. We're hiring our own SROs would be our own internal SROs. Right, if we have our own internal police force versus if we have the Clay County Sheriff's Department and uh, Green Cove PD and Orange Park PD, are those officers 24-7 employed? Do you know what I'm saying? When we say, no, no, no. So, so through the chair, when I say 24-7, that means that um, let's just say that they are, are, are driving home in the community and they see something, they're professionally obligated to stop and address. Right. Gotcha. And, um, or and there's a break in out of school. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they also, their job is they to, also to do that. Circulate. The other yeah. part of that is that that school is that SRO's school, responsibility. just like mm -hmm. responsibility, mm -hmm. just like that principal. Okay. Something happens to that school in the middle of the night just like is happening now, uh, that SRO would respond, whether it's an alarm, whether it's vandalism, break-in, you and, name it. And going to do a threat assessment, you know, it's just, it, it, it's part of the process. I've not seen anyone in the state of Florida open up a school district police division and not have, not have the cars. I just haven't seen it. And, and it, uh, the capital outlay can be, can be um, quite extensive with, with different um, options in here. But really, when it comes to these vehicles, th those will be mm -hmm. seven to ten years out um, as far as last. And we're not looking at replacing vehicles. Okay, we would so not be looking at replacing vehicles every couple of years. Well, say they're driving it. their car toward school, <clears throat> and there's an accident. John Q. Public has an accident right in front of them. What happens then? They're they just drive around and go to the school? No, their job <laughs> is to pull over, to, to check on that individual, to call, and, and to be and connected And so they're not to, available to the school at that well, time. They'll be connect, well, they should be on the way to school anyways, being on time. But they, they're they professionally yeah. obligated to stop, to call local law enforcement, and then make sure they have someone coming and then transition to their school. With, with, any, with any option, obviously with the exception of A, but with any option, 
we have relief built in, right. we have supervisors, et cetera. So you're gonna have, I mean, they're, they're, they're mm -hmm. employees like anybody else, they may call in sick one day, they're covered. Yeah. Same with running late, they're covered. Really, just like uh, Green Coat PD, Orange Park PD, Sheriff's Office, that's how they do it now. If they have somebody running late, it's covered. Well, and truly, if anybody was on their way to work and came up on an accident, you're going to stop and make sure everybody's Right, but I'm, I'm, I'm just disposed that something happened at that school, mm -hmm. but they're supposed to do that. But, but then if there were something extremely serious, a, a relief could go oh, yeah. They had to leave, so then a sergeant or lieutenant yeah. or someone would be able Absolutely. to go to the school. Absolutely. I mean, I can go either way on the cars. I'm just looking at cost savings and, yeah. and ways of being more um, cost effective. And that's why, you know, I kind of feel like the S SSOs, if we go all, all SROs, we should look at um, those that can transition. Great. We love it. And, you know, that's a $900,000 savings that we have to be school district first. And we have to look at those dollars for, you know, the district. So. Uh, if, if anywhere, it would really truly only be maybe a high school and not, and they're functioning now with just an SRO. But I don't see it as a need for an elementary school. Um, it, I, I, it's just to me, um, I understand these people stepped up and did a wonderful job for us. They did. And maybe we could find something to keep them on as an employee in a different capacity. Yeah, we kind of looked at it through, through attrition. That program would eventually go away. Mm -hmm. They would, they would, again, be a second or third right. bow and arrow in a, in a school. Right. Uh, they would be a training ground for the SRO program. We have quite a few now that, that could, I don't know if they would want to or not, but that could transition into the SRO program. Qualifications. And, and really we get them more into the safety oriented uh, side of our program, hoping that would help relieve our workman's comp issues and workman's comp claims. You know, they're out doing safety assessments on schools. There's two different types, of, well, there's three really. There's, there's mental threat, mental health threat assessments, which we're actively involved in, Mr. McCauley, with that. There's safety assessments of the school, there's a security assessment of schools. So all those have to be taking place right now. We may have an SRO or a guardian doing a safety and security assessment. Mm -hmm. You're looking at two different things. Um, these, our guardians, our SSOs, could be more safety oriented. Again, eventually we we um, not fill them through attrition. But they did, like, as Mrs. Character said, they stepped up. These folks, mm -hmm. some of the folks that we have in job. place are, were our own, not were, they are our own, own employees. Continued they came from an assistant, yeah. <laughs> right. they came from an assistant, maybe mm -hmm. came from ESC, right. custodian, you right. name it. Some of them were retired folks that just stepped up and said, you know, I'll do this for free. I had a lot mm -hmm. of that. So we, we got so, a great group. Really, if you look at this, Plan A is the one that we're using right now, mm -hmm. and we want to go to all SROs. So I like Plan B. I think it makes the most sense, and I really like the idea of staying with Orange Park and Green Coast okay. um, Police Department. They've, they've, done got a good that, job. they've got that relationship with kids and families. And if they would continue well, with us, I don't know if they would continue, but if they would, mm -hmm. I really like that plan. And, and, and I'm still thinking the $900,000, if we were to deduct the, deduct the $900,000 for the um, SSOs, you know, and, and that would be with all of the things anyway. Um, I think that well, I have had a job, an opportunity to talk with officers in each of those different areas at various functions. Green Cove Springs, I think, would be totally on board no matter what we did. And I would like to keep Green Cove Springs and Orange Park, those two Orange police Park departments, mm -hmm. very involved because they have taken it and and really instilled themselves into the school communities. Mm -hmm. I know that at the high school level and the junior high level, our officers, our SROs, are very much valued in each of those schools as well. And remember and when it, we were implementing all of this? Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to interrupt you, sorry. Both Orange Park and Green Cove were so eager to work with oh, us yes. oh, and, yes. and be yeah. accommodating. There were no mm -hmm. disagreements at all. They were s truly, you know, just mm -hmm. very professional. I have a concern about the us taking over as our SROs taking over the high schools because the sheriff's office and the junior highs. I, I mean, I guess I'm sitting back thinking, you know, it's working right now. Right now we have a working 
opportunity and a working solution well, not only that, you have for what we have. SROs but the, in those positions who know those schools and know the children. They know the students. They know they and the students know them. Right. And we're building There's a relationship yeah. with the community because these people, particularly in the junior highs and the high schools, are going to be in the community right after high school. Mm -hmm. And if we go to the point where we have where the school district provides the, I guess there's a break in the unity is where I'm looking at this. And I know that Duval County had their own, and I know other counties are building their own um, offices, whatever, but security offices, safety offices, whatever you want to call them. And I can see, I understand the perspective of if we continued with this, we would need to start that process. I totally get that. Um, I guess I'm not I don't feel comfortable turning it over to us versus keeping the sheriff's office involved. I agree. Because they've done such a phenomenal job. Well, not just that. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen the um, the positive things yes, that have come out of those relationships. I mean, we have an officer at Clay High School who um, bought a bike for a child who needed one, and um, just the. Virtue High loves them. Yeah. I mean, I mean and the junior highs are, are appreciating them. I mean, it's just, and, and hearing from the sheriff's office members, that those are the ones who are coming and saying, are we going to be doing more in the elementaries? And I'm like, mm, don't know, don't know. We have a culture problem right now that I feel like as a school district, we have an opportunity to contribute to the solution mm -hmm. where you teach kids from kindergarten that police officers, sheriff's department officers, they are your friends. Mm -hmm. They're here to help. And, and we, we will still be doing positive that. relationships. Yeah, yeah, those so yeah. We'll still be learning about law enforcement yeah, and, and it will be that, in every elementary school, whereas right now they're not in every elementary school. You know, I think Orange Park is the only one that does the DARE program. Um, Orange Park Police Force is the only Green one that... Cove and Charles E. Bennett. Do they? Mm -hmm. But none of our other elementary schools have a D.A.R.E. program anymore because that was eliminated, what, eight years ago, 12 oh. years ago? And, you know, that's a very important thing to have in all our schools. So this would be an opportunity to educate them at the elementary level if we had our own police force. Our SROs will be in every school. We could go back to the D.A.R.E. program okay. in every school. I agree with you on that. I think yeah, well, I'm, I'm I'm a, high yeah I agree with that as well. I'm just yeah. saying that I think that... A blended model. Uh, yes, they'll still be yeah. in the high school in junior high, and they'll get to know those officers just like they got to know Who the officers will be in the, Well, the SROs, SROs from the school department. School district. Mm -hmm. Yes, they will be yeah. like the law enforcement. So the blind. We'll learn the kids <laughs> about God, families you know, in the first I think, they like it so yeah. well. I think it's really good that we've had this opportunity mm -hmm. to just kind of, because you know, you think, well, I kind of like this and I kind of like that, but it, I was really anxious to hear what y'all thought about it. Um, one thing, when we got the uh, millage passed, mm -hmm. I'm sitting here thinking, what does John Q. Public expect us mm -hmm. to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They want an officer in every school. They, they want an officer in every school. I agree with school. that. That's right. Yes. Um, um, that's one side of it. Um, the other side of it is the relationships and so forth. Uh, and I'm, I am concerned about the cost from the sheriff's <coughs> office because since we agreed to all this, we have heard that like in St. John's, it's so much less money. And I don't understand why it's so expensive. And I, I just, I don't know if anyone has ever talked to St. John's to see why was their cost so so much less than ours. I don't under, I don't understand we that. We got we got one res, one recommendation from the sheriff's office that they hire new officers. They suit them up with all of the equipment that they needed. That they get a new car and that they go to our elementary schools SSROs. I remember that. And there were the other proposals time? that were out there that said. You know, the sheriff's office has personnel, um, I can't see the number here off the top, that the sheriff has roughly 280 sworn personnel. This means that there are approximately 280 men and women who are fully trained police officers. And in talking with these, a couple of the sheriff's officers, 
um, just throwing out, well, what if we used people, sheriff's officers, who were not necessarily working on that day, like they were on their day off. And they have days and days and days where they're on their day off. Um, they work four days a week. They work on the other three days at Vistar and in other places on a part-time, not a part-time basis, but um, supplemental, supplemental income, income, whatever. And there are other options for that as well. So, I mean, it was, that was one way of looking at something that was given to us. And I mean, this is just another way. And I think that there are other ways of looking at it as well. Yeah. So I'm just I don't torn. know that we have a lot I'm just of torn working relationships because we, that we must look at the cost of this. Then I'm thinking, well, we got the millage pass telling the public, you know, this is for the safety in the schools. And then um, I thought, well, we've got the safety officers now, but what are we doing more since they passed the millage than we were doing this year. Well, we haven't no, gotten I, the millage I, yet, and we haven't, that's well, why we were doing this. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, and I, I, I'm just throwing things out mm -hmm. because I don't have, I'm not married to any of this. I, I, I'm just I wanting to hear the conversation, mm -hmm. but I was just wondering what do <coughs> does the public expect when our millage money starts coming in uh, are we going to do more than we have been doing? I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, but I think there, probably in all of this, there's we're probably going to wind up with a piece of this, a piece of that, and that something that we can all live with, because we all want our kids to be safe. That's number one priority. Um, well, do we all agree that we need to have a sworn officer in every school and not have the guardian? program exclusively? Well, well we've got Good to question. get to that point. I, think, and I agree with that. Well, I think we do. Uh, the question I had was um, um, you mean the SRO officers, yes. who set up their job description? Did we do that or did the sheriff's office do that? Yeah. The current SROs we have? Yes, current. The, okay. agent, the, the, the agency that they work for. But the elementary school Not us. Did. For the, the for yes. program, right, the guardian. The I'm SSO talking the SROs. SRO, so. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. We, yeah. so yeah. currently, we don't. We did not create their job description. No. Right. The, the sheriff's sheriff 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 officers. They okay. work for the sheriff. Because the I know that when you and I walked park. around, we saw a concern. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, yeah, right. What? Right now, we have no control over any command of the SROs. Their job description. I agree with you. though. We did. I can. Yeah. We just want to make certain that, that people are visible and accessible. And doing what that. they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. gotcha. hmm. And so if we're not dictating what that job description is, and did we not have an option to do that, or did they? Okay, we did not. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's so that's, that's my concern about it. So ladies, how are we going, and Mr. Davis, how yes, are we going to reach some consensus on this, or is this something that's going to be drug out through a board meeting. Yeah, so through the chair, I would say that for, for me, I do think we have really good partnerships. And But I would say that this board has to determine, A, like Ms. Gilhausen just posed the question, you know, what is our priority and in our, in our outcome? It is to put, I, hope, I know it is to put an officer in every one of our schools. And then second tier, you got to look at the financial impact. What can we do systemically for reoccurring costs? What is that going to, you know, cost us, and can we get a quality product uh, built into this every single day? So, um, for you know, for me, you know, this is why we provide options, and, and I just need direction for which option this board would like to go so that I can begin putting this in place because we've got to hit the ground running now. And, and well, you, either way, because i got to do contract extensions, modifications, mm -hmm. everything. Right. On these, A, B, C, D, E, mm -hmm. what is your <coughs> recommendation? You know, for, for, for me, I think they're all good options. So I, I'm just going to well, tell you, you're I, no I, I, if, they're all if good I could options. add real quick, yes. timing is important. Is really the yes. 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 Uh -huh. whether, whether we <laughs> we're asking, choose an option that increases sheriff's office employees or reduces them, uh -huh. we need to give them that courtesy. Yeah, well, I think that. As well as in-house staff, we got to do some well, planning. My concern is, is, like you said, that um, the sheriff may not certify our SSOs for next year. Mm -hmm. We'll be forced to go all SROs mm -hmm. through the sheriff's office, and we're looking at we eight, you know, <coughs> you know, five point eight million plus, mm -hmm. and reoccurring thereafter as a higher number each year. 
which is why if, if we were going to choose something, I would ask that we choose plan B, but that I would ask to amend it and remove the SSOs and save that $900,000. <coughs> uh, that, that would be my, my choice, and if, you know, if, that, if that's the direction we go. Um, and if we did that, you would need to put on this month to the chair, if the board decides that, that, that we want to move forward with option, you're talking about option B? Option yeah. B. Then, yeah, we would have to you know, develop a, a job description, which we, you know, uh, we, we can build real fast. We can, um, we would have to seek to hire a, a police chief to start looking at uh, filing paperwork and start to look at recruiting processes. And I will say that, you know, if we don't really truly equip an officer with a vehicle, I think that's going to hurt recruiting options as and, well. And I'm not, I'm not saying remove them. Yes, I'm just, no. I'm going to leave it as is. But I'm just asking that we would look at the SSOs and eliminate that. Yes, ma'am. Save that nine hundred thousand through the chair. I would say, Ms. Kerrigan, is that four point two reoccurring mm -hmm. and, and the first year is that the SSOs aren't in that money because right. it's a separate pot of money of right. Um, right. of state schools. But we and we'll continue to receive that for the mm -hmm. next. Correct. several right. years year. so that is money that we will get for hardening did the right. sso have a car too no ma'am they no. do not but i believe through the chair that you know we talk about miss letter said it well doing something differently i think that when you put resource officers at schools and yeah. you don't give it to them i think the community may have some heartburn with it and, and i agree with that i mean i understand that and it is that a visible that thing that oh, I, agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, just don't want, I don't want leaving though i agree with i'm you. concerned oh, no, about no, no, that no, no. because no, we, i we, good point. we are sorry we are required by statute <laughs> to have somebody on campus mm -hmm. with no yeah. which means somebody comes in to transport a student if necessary yeah right. there, there will always be somebody on right. that that's, campus that's, always. that's at what least I'm, one. my concern is that right. people are going to see them and say oh well then i can use them for yes. whatever yeah, that's or right. i have a I, domestic no, no, dispute no, no. or High whatever principal. That's, right. Right. <laughs> that's right yeah. our hopes would be to have multiple especially at our at our bigger campuses right. yeah. multiple <laughs> bow and arrows but at a minimum we got to have one yeah so. And if we could afford it, that would certainly be the goal to or or to look at maybe the higher incident rates right. in some schools. Maybe there's a higher right. incident rate at keep, schools keep and say, SSO okay, that's an area that needs school, to be in addition to the yeah. SRO. I mean, I would be open to that if you felt it was necessary to have an SSO at the high school in addition. And that was, that was yeah, that's, that's a thought. That was, that was, the, thought. Yes, that was the thought. Yes, ma'am. To do to go toward B. Do you have time uh, to um, get that set? I would say that um, I'm B not necessarily would... necessarily in favor of B. I'm more in favor of D. So I would say if... D if, is All right, so let's just look at both these options. So B and D are going to require us to, to put our own workforce together, whether it's at an elementary or whether it's at a scale. So in order for those options, if those are two options the most attractive to happen, then I have to build a job description which we can get done fairly quickly. And then... Um, he said he may have something. Um, I, we, we could build a job description, we, and we would have to, I don't mean to be unprofessional, take a job description and an allocation the same month. I know the board doesn't like that. We won't try to do it. But I would need to get that done quickly so I can start have, hiring an individual and get the paperwork started with, the, with, the, uh, with law enforcement, Florida Department of Law Enforcement. And then I would say the recruitment effort would start immediately once um, that I, process. I also have another question. So if we stand up our own police force, I know we talked about the escalating cost of having the sheriff's department, yes, job, mm -hmm. but I believe we'd have similar concerns with standing up our own force because, again, you're going to have employees that get a raise. Mm -hmm. Are they going to be part of the support staff, or what would they? So through the chair, so th we, they would be um, in isolation, and so they wouldn't be in any like bargaining unit. And, and, they, and they you, and the, we would yeah. determine every year if we actually had funding to give. The same way we do administrators. I mean, right. if we had money, then great. And that's why they. But they wouldn't be part of a bargaining no, unit. No, no. no, they would no, not. No, not. Right, but D, from what I was listening to y'all. It's to keep SSOs and SROs, right? Well, in the like, we would we would, we would if basically we that. have the SSOs currently yeah. in our system, and if they if we built a police department, I'm assuming if I'm incorrect, please let me know. But I'm assuming that those SSOs would likely become the SRO if they're certified. If they're certified, or you'd have a bench to get them certificated. It just now, says that the SSOs if, would be a support role for the SROs and be safety oriented. But that would so you're saying so you would have an SSO and SRO. That SRO. would be the yeah. SSOs would not be there. The S they would be well, the not SROs. What it says. Well, not well, these are. Uh, yeah. These are ideas, yeah. they, as you said. It's like, you know what? I, what I would really like at this point, we, we're getting muddy here. 
I'd like to know the difference in A to B to C to D to E. What is the major difference between yeah, these two? On this, on this. this and, and I would say that we uh, just need through, through the really chair, really if we, like I said, SSO's officers, we, we, we don't control whether or not we have it for next year or not. I mean, the yeah. sheriff's been a good partner in that that's work. Right. So we got to figure out, that, um, if we, but it's not guaranteed. It's not there. guaranteed unless they change the legislative directive Correct. and it gives other in, individuals to be able to, to do it. And and I, me personally, I think that the board should decide what we want and then it's training and funding should be passed through through any entity and that's just not I mean here I mean mm -hmm. right now it just says this person gets to do this and like I said if you have changing guards one person may not say they want to do it but um, I would say the SSOs are embedded but not financially but they I would say you would look at high schools and potential junior high schools leaving something like to have two on board at minimum to have mm -hmm. two on board in case yeah oh good out. so you're talking so, across uh, the board up, but that would be separate and it's up to the board mm -hmm. I like a gradual phase out. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like, um, that's what troubles me about B. It's like ripping mm -hmm. off the Band-Aid and we don't even have a set plan yet. So I, I like D as a transition. Mm -hmm. Maybe eventually, you know, Maybe we get our guys trained up and, and we can I mean, go to B. But <coughs> I, I don't like that, especially when we, we don't have anything to evaluate about the effectiveness mm -hmm. of our own safety officers. And our junior highs and our high schools are our highest risk. So as far as, as the risk to have an event happen. So to me, that's where you want your, your surefire line of defense there. And we could transition the, the elementary schools to have our resource officers, the Clay County School District resource officer mm -hmm. there. And then, um, you know, grow it from there if, if it's effective. I would think that if we created our own police force, that the people that will be applying will be existing officers in other areas mm -hmm. who are professionals who are trained I, I don't think we're going to be getting 18 year old kids right out of school or probably it could be the very we're, same people that are there we're, we're going exactly and and i don't think that but the well, that's i don't share don't your concern uh, uh, with d i i look at b as a better mo better model because i like the idea of our district actually having that <coughs> that control and the continuity with the being, um, uh, except for like, you know, Green Cove and Orange Park, those few schools, I'm fine with that. But for all our high schools, I would rather see that be through Clay County School District's police force or whatever we would call it. Which and is why I like being better. Differ. And I also like that's that where we it's, differ. Yeah. it's more cost effective than D. Well, I, I like creating our job description and job and the duties too. And right now, we don't have that. So, where are you? Do the job description for the SSO. I'm looking at B. I, 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 don't, for yeah, I'm, SSO I, I don't like that okay. someone else is saying, you know, uh, what their job description is, and it's not matching what it should be. I have heard we visually about. saw it, so it's not <laughs> right, and that's and that's in yeah. one location. Right. But but I mean, yeah, yeah, there, there aren't that many. Right. Well, it could but be in others. Though. We I, and that's in talking with the principals at the others. I've not run into that complaint at all. I've run into the opposite yeah. that they are stepping up. That they not only work as a police officer, but then also work as a counselor. And it's been witnessed even by. Well, I don't usually use my husband, but he did a ride along with one of the police officers not so long ago and went into the high school and it was witnessed there as well that it's not, it's... But that would be with any police what, officer. Yeah, it's I not just the select seven. It's not what? It's, it's not, it, the police officers that are in the high schools go be above and beyond being just a police officer is what I'm saying. A sheriff's department a sheriff's deputy, whatever you want to call them, go above and beyond. And they are building that relationship that will lead into the community. And that's where, that's why I guess I'm not quite ready to, whoever used the word, rip the bandit. But we've been, we've had a very long-term relationship with the sheriff's office mm -hmm. at the high school level. And at the junior high level this year, and I'm hearing good things about it, and that's why I'm. I, this is the first negative I've heard. Yeah. 
it was a visual thing. Absolutely honest. It, we actually well, visually saw and it. And I understand. And that's <laughs> one that's one officer. And there's going to be bad officers. There are bad teachers. There are bad administrators. I mean, and once you learn about them, it's how can we either help them or redirect them into something else. So, so what you're describing from the police officers will happen with all of them. It's not just those select seven or fourteen are compassionate. No, I they no, they're all, all compassionate. They are. So they, the high school SSOs are compassionate. They're also going to establish relationships and and be more than just a police officer with our students. But and there's maybe not that, that relationship year, with the community. Right. The next step into the right. community. And that's where when they be, when they I wish I could I wish I, I could really verbalize know that it there's differently. There's a large relationship with our SRO and our community at every school. I don't know if that's really the case. I know that there's a relationship with the students and the staff and maybe a few parents that come through at a high school level. But I don't believe that it's any more of a relationship than any other police officer in the county has. And I think that it would be the same if we created our own. I don't know exactly what you're talking about when you say that relationship with the community. Well, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that what Ms. Dole is talking about is if an officer, a sheriff, Clay County Sheriff's Department officer, has those relationships with students and families within the school, it helps the Sheriff's Department when it comes to what they know about our community to have mm -hmm. that knowledge mm -hmm. and that presence and those relationships. Um, already in existence, if that makes sense. It helps, mm -hmm. I think, I see a benefit to crime at large in our community when we have the Sheriff's Department in our schools. And the other, the opposite side, or the the perspective of the police department or Sheriff's Office in our community, in our community. as well. Absolutely. The student's perspective of that. And I think it changes the perspective within our own community. I mean, I'm thinking of outside of the community and the problems that police forces have had. I look and at it as, it's the difference to me, if I'm a, a, a going to the, the Orange Park Mall mm -hmm. and there's a mall cop there versus a sheriff's department deputy there. There you go. What is my opinion of the safety of that mall? Do you know what I'm saying? Right, absolutely. That to me, that's the difference of having a school district resource officer versus a sheriff's deputy officer mm -hmm. at your school. If he has a gun, it's no difference to me. <laughs> I mean, if he's carrying a gun. You know, it's I realize every option is in front of y'all, but y'all want we want to walk through it. Can I ask you, you a question, Mr. Harvin? Yes, ma'am. You had a choice of any of these, which would you choose? I was waiting for. And that. I was going to ask Doctor. I'm Trump waiting the same for that. Well, and and. Not not um, sidestepping it, but I guess in a way it sounds like I will be sidestepping it. But mm -hmm. it all depends on what it is you're after. If you're after strictly, if this is strictly a money thing, and okay, by gosh, we only want to spend X amount of dollars no more, then we need to go with a certain option. Mm -hmm. If we want everybody to have a piece of the pie, then we need to go with another option that's listed in there. Um, either way, what I do like in every option is we build in there that we will be starting our own, own law enforcement agency. Mm -hmm. I really think that's critical. Mm -hmm. Whether it's now or whether the board says we're, we're going to wait to actually employ an SRO, I really think that's crucial as we build that in there. Um, Come on, give us your well, well, I just, just pick I one. Just, <laughs> I, well, I, well, I'm back to where you all are. I mean, it's, 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 it's really what makes sense is either B or D. So here's a question. We've done really a lot does. of community surveys. Would it not be worthwhile to do a community survey on, op since the ones we've kind of narrowed it down to are B and D, could we not do a community survey on? I guess time is a big decision. I think it's board decision. Unfortunately, because you've got a lot of things to What I said was like sure. Dr. Kilgore, what do you think of B and tooth favoring D? And I and not ready to commit. Can we ask Dr. Kemp what he's thinking? Yeah, Dr. Kemp. Uh, yes, yes ma'am. Um, from an operations perspective, when we looked at this task, it was a huge task mm -hmm. to look at m multiple options. Uh, I recall the original conversations when we were kind of forced from a financial perspective to go to the SSO model. Now, fortunately, that worked out. But I do recall the initial conversations being that the intent was not only from the board, but the intent, I think the intent of the one of the military 
mm -hmm. passing was that the public would expect a police officer in every school. That's been stated here today. Mm -hmm. So when we presented these options, we tried to present them as consistently as possible. They gave you it, uh, what the option, what we're currently doing, which is not a SRO in every school, but we're also um, not in control of the variables to move right. forward. So we realized that. So then I wanted to provide, that's why I ranked them. I made a decision to rank them from lowest cost to highest cost from a recurring model. Because forget about the capital cost for a second. You're gonna have that with every option. So when you look at the lowest recurring cost, the most fiscally responsible recurring cost to put a police officer in every school, it starts with option B. Mm -hmm. then it's, and then if it's the board's wish, we look at C. If it's the board's wish, we look at D. Um, it, it talked about if you want to include partnerships. My role was to put the district in the best position to accomplish the intent, which was to put an SRO in every school, and also be the most fiscally responsible. So for me, that starts with option B. Um, the most fiscally responsible to put a police officer in every school. If the board's wishes to move forward um, to a C or a D or even a D or eliminate C, and E is probably pretty much out of the question. But those options are all there for you to decide what it is the, the, the political intent might, what the unintended consequences are from that. My goal is to do it in the best interest of the district. And for me, B, it puts a police officer in every school, gives us the opportunity to um, uh, start our own police department. Gives a, in the sense that we can control the variables over time, we can get our own certification, we don't we can get our own training officers, we don't have to rely on any external agency. And as our district continues to grow, uh, you know, we're gonna be, we're really truly looking at, and I know Mr. Fossa gave his growth presentation, but we're looking at 50 schools within the next 10 to 12 years. We're mm -hmm. gonna move from where we are to 50. We are no longer a little, a little district. We are a medium to large size district. Um, from a fiscal responsibility, the only cost that really ca I cared about since we're blessed with safe school money, we're blessed with the community support with millage, the only cost I was really most concerned about was the recurring year two and what was our ability to sustain that over time. Um, and that's why they're ranked in the area they are. So if, if Mike Kemp walked out of here today, I would say if our goal was to put an SRO in every school and be the most fiscally responsible we could, we need to look at option B. Now, here's my question. Can we make option B happen in the time allotted between now and when we have to renew our next contracts with our SSOs or our SROs. Yes, so who's chair? Yes, September is our date is for our articulation agreements between, I think, all entities. Uh, or just with the sheriff's office. Two minutes ago is June 30th. I do. Right. And the other one is September 30th. Right. So you would have to, I mean, we'd have to hit the ground running. And through yes. Mr. Super, through, through the chair. Uh, I could you do it? Do That's it. the question. I mean, we can get a lot of stuff done. We've got a lot of stuff done. I, I believe We've that we can get a lot done. But yeah, yeah, I believe that we can get, get we can get it done. If it's the the wish of the board, we can get it done. And through Mr. Super, through, through the chair. Now, I, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. go ahead. I'm sorry, sir. Well, no, I just got one thought. Okay, I mean, go ahead. If if the wish of the board was to go with me. And then we, you know, and then we had hiccups around, you know, from a hiring perspective, which, I mean, we're talking about hiring mm -hmm. how many, 50, 58, or and maybe 40, I mean, I don't know, 47. Be, or, you, 40 yeah, then we would have, we, we, you would be notified in advance, and then you may have to come to the table to figure out if you want to expand, so, you know, we'd have to go back to the sheriff's office and say, can you help us in this situation? Now, if we end up going back to the sheriff's office, let's say we chose B, and we end up going back to D. We've now burned a bridge, in essence. Um, I would say that's through, another, I mean, yeah, that's, through, through the we're chair. We're working well um, right now with you know, the sheriff's office. I, through I don't the think it would burn a yeah, bridge. Yeah, I think that. But I think, well, I, I, I'm just I think it would be asking a lot for mm -hmm. for them to try to figure out their staffing yeah, last minute be. like that. Do you know what I, I'm saying? Could, if could they be. only have so many could officers, be. they may not have what we need. Yeah. Listen, I'll do whatever the board, as far as it, you know. Uh, I just wanted to say from an ops perspective, we call this scrimmaging. We scrimmage mm -hmm. in our department all the time and we scrimmage on options and we try to look at the unintended consequences mm -hmm. associated with every decision. Uh, but when we're scrimmaging on these options, we have we're all we also prepare for if the if the board's wish was to go with B, or D, D, or E, which uh, with all options, we're also when we are also prepared, we've already already worked with HR. Uh, to start the, the conversations with both job, the job descriptions that are needed to get us started to get our own certification. And uh, whether the board's wishes B or D, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, that can still be worked out. Mm -hmm. But I think action at some point needs to be taken to start the process to let us get our own certification as a law enforcement agency. And okay. I, I think Go we ahead. also need to factor into our decision what we talked about with there being a shortage of officers. Being There's kind. a short of, shortage of supply. So if we go to hire 50, there may not be 50 applicants. That might be a very realistic. Okay. Let me, can I, may I ask one more question of Dr. Kim? The, the hardening of our schools. Okay, the, careful. I, no, I'm just saying the equipment, I'm using generic terms, the equipment that we've needed, etc. Financially. And stop me if I can't. I, I, I want to just Unless ask you know. if, <laughs> I just ask you if financially we have had the ability to procure what we've needed. Does that? And yeah. So I can say I'm to sort the chair, of, I'm sort of yeah. keeping it broad and not specific, yeah, and, and just saying, I mean, we're looking at the millage. Without saying what's needed. Yes, yeah, so yeah, I'm not forward. saying what's needed. Ms. Ball, to the chair, mm -hmm. I can answer that. I mean, it's going to be an ongoing, um, uh, I guess, task mm -hmm. to make certain that we continue to harden structures. It, we've done a great job through Dr. Kemp's and Mr. Harbin's shop to make certain we move that in the right direction more than ever. As I said, we've spent uh, a significant amount of money, like six million, close to six million dollars, on on that work. And historically, we've only you know spent around you know less than a million. So, we've done a good job this year. We still have a lot to do. Remember, we have uh, a grant through the uh, through DOE that gives mm -hmm. us around a million dollars. We have safe okay. schools money to help so us to do that. And then we also right. have we also right. have uh, money set aside that looks at facility upgrades for Harden as well that we may, that's inclusive of the five-year projective um, projects as well to address. Even, yes, sir. Even. But, the, the, I'm sorry, Doc, the, our, our structures are really old, you know that? So it's yes. going it's, it's to continue to expand and, and there's need, which means that the more money you can use for, uh, you know, that we can use from a millage or rather else, we'll continue to add. Yes, sir. Even, yeah, prior, case, even sir. prior to the funding so sources, we'll that as well. even prior to these additional funding sources, mm -hmm. your EFP that you approve every year has always been a priority for safety and security. We've always worked on cameras. We've always worked on those types of options. Mm -hmm. We just recently received the $1.3 million and another funding source, which is specifically identified for hardening projects mm -hmm. and safety and security. So. We're blessed with a lot of different funding sources to accomplish it, whether it's millage, this uh, school, safe, school safe money, the, uh, this, this, the grant we just received. We have the opportunity to do that. Now we start rolling these projects out. And okay. uh, when we were doing that before we got any grant money, we were slowly getting them. I mean, now we can just go at a faster rate to make sure that we secure uh, the facilities the best we can. Is this only on the agenda? Mm -hmm. no. We need. Uh, to wrap this up because we're running against the clock here, discuss outlook. This is what we've done. We have discussed. We can't take any action now, but it is mm -hmm. the pleasure of y'all to go ahead and get this on the agenda. I, I would like to add option B with an amendment of re removing the SSOs to the agenda. I think just bring the discussion to the board. I mean, if y'all want to just say B and D to come to the board, or if you want to have a chance to really well, go back and look at I'd like to this. specifically put option B on under my name as an item to take action on. You can vote it down if the board chooses to, but I mean, we can discuss it at that point, but I would like to bring option B I like this. with the deletion of the SSOs to our And then I had two on a D. That's why I thought if we could just get it on the agenda, we can finish this discussion. Well, maybe we should vote on the agenda be able to see the options. Mm -hmm. and them and uh, they may they, want, they may want to speak at our meeting about yeah. what they think is the best. I, I would prefer to have some time to really go back. I mean, we've heard a lot of things that mm -hmm. we hadn't heard just from the interaction from staff and with the board members. Um, you're you're certainly entitled as a board member to put something on the agenda. I personally would prefer um, just bringing it to the board. Let us have a little more time to digest this, and we may think of things that we aren't thinking of this morning, mm -hmm. and bring it up, and then the board make a decision at the board we, meeting. We have had this, I mean, two weeks ago you sent this to us, right? So, I mean, I don't know if the rest of you looked at it, but I certainly looked at it and made phone calls on it. So I came here prepared today knowing, you know, that it would what, be a discussion. what I wanted, you know, what I was interested in. So. Um, so then if I could reiterate that B or or D does not include the cost of SSO program. Yeah. 
Yep. At the what? Does not include the SSO exactly. cost. But the wording on the it does NRC say team. that they're still there, so yeah, we, can, we need to just remove that Mr. language. Mr. Harper, when you met with the sheriff's office, I mean, did we go with a proposal for um, the job description and duties for that person, for the uh, um, SROs? When, when we met with the sheriff's office, did we go over the duties? With our, the yes, with the duties. I mean, were we... Well, did we give them a job description or did the, he give us the job description? Yeah, yeah, and, and we didn't approve. Yeah. Yeah. On the district, we didn't approve or disapprove. Yeah, okay. to, to the chair, and sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, to the chair, you know, it's uh, their role, that, uh, like a principal should not guide the work of a resource officer just because they're law enforcement supports. Right. Um, so uh, we, we weren't involved in that. And, and Okay. And we don't, because we don't own the employee. It's a, it's just a service at us at our at our at our schools. Yeah, they're employees of the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the principal had we could certainly give the input if it was uh -huh. So if the if the principal at a school had an issue with the SRO or a teacher or whoever, yeah. they could call the sheriff's department and, and let them yeah. know. This they is should. My but I mean, was there a job like, description so they would know that this is okay, this is not okay? That's my question. That There's not a question for the sheriff. Not that we have. Right. There was not. There's an SSO job description, although. Didn't they have to sign a certification saying, a certificate saying that they knew that the sheriff holds it and that they are responsible to the sheriff? Uh, the, yeah, our guardians, our SSOs, yes, yeah. they, they signed it. They had to sign an agreement right. with them, yes. Yeah. Now, is that what you're, are you talking about the SSOs or well, yes. SRO? I'm, I'm talking about them, really. Well, she was referring, though, specifically to an SRO, SRO because okay, that was no, ordered. Okay. So we didn't have any input into that. No, okay. So, what do y'all want to do? Point yes, Mr. Bailey. Yeah, talking about limiting to one option on the or having this available to the public. The statute requires that the public be allowed to have input before any vote is taken and any action taken mm -hmm. by the board, I think, would require them to have sufficient knowledge to make input, and that includes all of these documents. I, I feel better being open about it. Mm -hmm. um, Especially when we just got a millage. I mean, that's $11 million. They want to know what their options are. I mean, they were good enough and supportive enough, and uh, um, I think it, it, it can't hurt to have this here. And then, uh, you know, I'm sure that all the board members will be comfortable in what they have decided, basically, by the time you get there. But it's always good to have input. But, um, Ms. Caracas, if you still want to put option B on there, that's your right. But I would suggest, as Mr. Bickner stated, that it would be better to just put this on the agenda and then we'll make then a decision make that night. Motion that so night. I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Are there any questions from the audience? No. Okay. School board comments on the master board reinstatement. We all got the email about it from uh, Ms. Peterson. Uh, it's uh, since we just have a change in one board member. Uh, thank you, Tina. Uh, this is uh, required that we have a seven-hour course. The thing that has disturbed me so is like eight, it's eighteen hundred dollars for seven hours, and I wanted to ask y'all if you're interested in doing that. I think has it always been that expensive? I don't yeah, I we, think so. We actually have a plaque up that still has Tina's name on it. That we never I, took down. So, so technically we're all, all white out. Or <laughs> I, I think over. they've gotten too rich for our blood. Yeah. So if you would send, that was a, pretty a, pricey. Or, That's all. send an email or a phone call or whatever to Ms. Peterson and tell her that at this time we're and I'm essentially, we decline. don't have any new board members. And Just she's been on before, yeah. so mm -hmm. I don't. And know. I, I thought that was. But I, when I saw the eighteen hundred dollars, I thought so that was, we can do lots of things with that eighteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so we'll What's we'll yeah. we might do it at a later time. Okay, <laughs> now um, the uh, workshop. Can I say one more over? thing? Can I say one thing in the workshop? <laughs> oh, go, I have it. I don't right. hear it. Right. So I don't hear it. So. So with all these options, regard and it talks about there's two that are favorable. Can I be? It's going to require me to bring a job description for a police chief and an allocation. Can I be? Can I do that? Go yes. for it. Mm -hmm. so every option. Right. Asks Tell us well, everything you, you yeah. want us to. Yeah. Right. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Okay. Right, thank you. So I will adjourn the workshop, and then we're going to open the special meeting of January 29, 2019.